Welcome, one and all, to another episode of THRS Deep Cuts. I'm Andrew. Tim. And I'm Dave Durst, apparently. Turn it up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice setup. I love it. Well done. Um, for those who weren't playing along last time, the only thing that's gone wrong with that prank is it wasn't red. Uh, we just did the red cap I know. from Dave. I don't own a red hat. <laughs> That's all right. We've, we've, we've seen Fred Durst without a red, with a, a different coloured caps. Okay. <laughs> we should get those T-shirts made. that would be a lot, a lot of fun just to see what happens with that. Hey, if you want a Dave Durst T-shirt, which is a, a, a funny little image of Dave wearing a red cap, let us know, and we'll see if we can get something sorted out between now and the end of the year. Um, it's yeah, I don't know how that all time. Probably I is. Know <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see how things go. All right. If it we're here tonight, Austin three sixteen, I'm going to freak out. What was that? If it outsells Austin three sixteen, I'm going to freak out. Hey, we'll all be fucking laughing at if it if it outsells hey, that. Bang, if it outsells that, you'll be laughing, freaking out to the bank. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Um, all right. Cool. We've got some comments coming through already. I'll get to those in just a second. But just to give everyone a heads up, we are gathering to talk hey, about... Hey, how about, instead of Austin 316, it just says Dave Vibes. Dave Vibes. Okay. <laughs> Dave Vibes. Okay. We can do this. We can do this. This is writing itself. All right. We're going to be talking about the latest from Omnium Gatherum, John 5 and Lucifer tonight, alongside an all-time classic from Armored Saint. Uh, we'll talk about some hard rock happenings, which is some singles and a bit of a discussion point later on as well. We'll feed the bin and all that sort of stuff usual coming up a bit later. Uh, before we get stuck on all those things, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, comment, share, all the usual shit that everyone gets you to do every single time they do these things. We're not different to anyone else, so please, so it helps us get the word out there. Everything you need to know to follow us is in the post or the description of this episode, wherever you're tuning into it from, be it now or later on. Thank you for joining us whenever you are tuning in. Thank you for taking the time. Hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, a big thank you, of course, to our fantastic sponsors in Squidding, Scrimping, Alt, Cult, and Rockstar Finance. Their details, just like ours, are in the post or the description. Please find, give them a follow, or at least give them a like on a social media post just to so show them a little bit of love and give them a bit of a chop out in that regard. So it'd be greatly appreciated by us here as well. Uh, if you want to help us out directly, check out our Patreon page. Uh, any and every bit of uh, help there does add up. And if you do give us just a couple of bucks a month, which is what we're plugging at the moment, then you'll uh, get to get a whole bunch of new music and, and bits of information and news pieces directly into your inbox every single day pretty much. And that's about 50 plus pieces of news or songs, more songs than anything else a week, which is a lot. And uh, you get to vote on things like the Classic Album Review, which is what we're doing tonight. But yeah, let's do the rounds before we get stuck into things and we'll do the hellos to the people in a second as well. Actually, I'll do those now quickly. So we've got Sumaleth. Thank you for joining us once again, as always. Good to have the regulars with us. Another one in nudes. Hopefully we'll get this thing wrapped up before the TV broadcast uh, starts over there in Adelaide, but I'm not holding my breath, but we'll see how we go. Uh, um, and uh, so good to have you here with us either way, nudes. And also Sally, good to see you here on YouTube as well. Uh, wow. Saw nudes post Dave Durst, lol. So yes, she has seen that one. If you want to see what we're talking about, search for the THRS Lounge on Facebook because there is a funny little post oh, okay. going in there with Nikki. Nikki actually put that one together for us. So that's uh, very Thank well you, done Nikki. by much yes, appreciated. thank you. <laughs> we all appreciate it, Dave, not so much. Uh, um, but anyway, let's do the rounds. Let's see how everyone's going. So, Tim, you missed out on Monday night. How are you going this week? Yeah, I'm all right. It's, just, it's, been, it's been quite busy the last couple of weeks. But, um, you know, things are settling down back into a rhythm again. So, um, yeah, doing okay. Actually, um, you know, played with the band for the first time last week. So, yeah, actually... Um, it's surprising, you know, after so long without playing, you know, live instruments, you forget how mm. loud everything is. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, it was fun. It was fun to move some air again. Yeah. Did it? Did it get the juices going? Did it feel, you know, all the things? Oh, you look, it, to feel like? Like, look, this we were talking. We were talking to we were talking to Sash from uh, Whole Lot of Love, and we we're like, look, we'll, we'll play. We'll play without a rehearsal next week if you want us to. Like, yeah. We're just here to do shit. So yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if anyone wants to book either Orange or Saints, we'll do it. Nice. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Open invitation, folks. Get on it because they're both fucking great bands to watch live as well. So you won't be getting anything subpar. You'll be getting one of the better ones going around for sure. 
All right. Just quickly, uh, Mark has joined us tonight as well. So good to see you here. He's saying good day, champs. Good Thank night. you for joining us once again. Always good to have some people jumping in. Keep saying hi in the comments and give us your thoughts on anything and everything as we go along. And uh, Andrew Marshall, a good friend of ours too, has jumped in on YouTube. Hey, so hi, guys. So thank you for joining us as well. For those that are tuning in via Instagram, I do apologize. Your comments don't come through on this platform. If you want to get involved in the comments, I'll just switch to a different platform. But you can watch us just fine on Instagram. It's just that you can't get the comments through. Anyway, enough of that. Dave, how about you? How's your week going so far? Yeah, not much has changed since Tuesday. Day at home, she had a fantastic time at camp. Saw a whole mm -hmm. bunch of photos and she's smiling in every single yeah, one. Yeah, cool. Lots of stories. So lots of hugs when she got back. So don't ever leave me again. Yeah. <laughs> apart wow. from that, work, work's been killing me. We've, um, yeah. yeah, suddenly we're trying to catch up in the last two months, not doing anything. It's just like, hey, we're going to do it all in a couple of weeks because Christmas is approaching, but it's good. At least we've got something to do. And yeah, the back clock is moving. It's all good. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, you I'm got good. a breeze going on out there, Dave. Yeah, it's a bit chilly. We'll <laughs> <laughs> see. We'll see. Yeah. What was that, babe? Yeah. What, what was that? Dude? Say, how, how cool was school camp though back in the day? School camp was great. Yeah, I remember great well, camp. I was throwing up. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so you were the kid on the bus throwing up all the way there, were you? I threw up halfway through. I was fine on the bus ride home. <laughs> That's an interesting sub 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 topic, I guess. Has anyone thrown up at school or on camp? Hmm, interesting one there. I've thrown up once at <laughs> school. Once at school, and it was spectacular. I threw up, was a good I threw up once in a car on the way to school. <laughs> I've never done that. <laughs> never thrown up in a vehicle. Never thrown up in a vehicle. Oh, I have. Um... I remember once, um, it was a Sunday morning, and I could just feel it coming. And what I did was, because we were in a neighborhood street, so yeah. the car, we weren't going that fast, so I just opened the window and stuck my head out. Mm -hmm. And all over the side of the car, yep. on the road, as the car was going. Nice. <laughs> Sometimes See, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Oh, I, I copped it. I was had the window down and someone was throwing up unexpectedly out the front window and it came back through the splashback and got me oh, in the back no. seat. Fun oh, one no. night. Oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's a lot of fun in games. So, yeah, that, that's an interesting subtopic just randomly there. So I've thrown up at school. Dave's thrown up at camp and Tim has thrown up on the way to school just to get everyone on the record in, the, <laughs> in that space there. Um, was there anything else? Huh? Things we learn on THRS that camera's slipping. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else you wanted to add there, Dave, to your week? I'm good. How's your week? It's just busy. It, like everyone else, it's no different than anyone else. It's just getting into the end of the year now. For us, it's um, production deadlines are the real crunch now. I've got to get everything done for the year and a good chunk of January by about December 8th. So if anyone's trying to get a hold of me for anything at all between now and then, basically forget it. Um, I'm shutting up shop for the year to get production done and that's going to be about it. <clears throat> um, but around that, everything's good. Everything's good. Home life's good. Uh, just doing stuff around the house, building the new set, which you'll all see very soon. Um, just doing that sort of stuff while trying to keep on top of everything, which is just crazy because it's not just... Um, um, <laughs> it's not just us that's feeling it. it's all the, all the promoters that are trying to get their stuff in for the end of the year as well now that we're almost halfway through November so it's all just sort of just this big pile it'll all build and then it'll all suddenly stop for about you know four to six weeks in a little bit but we'll see what happens with all that but right now it's just busy but everything's good which is I like being busy it's just great um it means the time flies uh quickly on to the to the comments here someone's gone uh, Sally's gone someone stole my pillow which I'm assuming is to do with um <laughs> the, the throwing up bit of things uh -huh. there which would be a that would suck if that's the truth there, Sally. So, yeah, that, that's bad. Uh, Michael has dropped in to say hi. So, good to see you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, Andrew Marshall's on school trip is why I can't drink beer. There's obviously a backstory to that. But <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but then Sally responded with saying, you know, who does that little fucker with stealing the pillow, I believe. So, there we go. Got a comment over on Twitch. So, thank you for joining us over there. Cisco mm -hmm. Punch. Yo, Australia Surge. Yes, we're in Australia. I'm not sure about the Surge part, but... We are Australian, so thank you for joining us mm -hmm. tonight. Hopefully, you're enjoying some of our stupidity. Uh, it is just what we do here. 
Uh, BP on YouTube. Looks like guns back in 87. Dave, Axel, Tim, Slash, Andrew, and Duff. So <laughs> there we go. That's actually it. Dave, be happy with yeah. that? <laughs> sure. I'm happy. <laughs> yes. I'm leaving. And uh, what? Just doing my Axel impression. I'm leaving. No. Oh. No, you have to be late for that. Man. You have to be late. <laughs> <laughs> um, our good friend TC, he's going to bring on Tim's Limp Biscuit rebuttal. That is coming very, very soon. That is coming. So we have set aside a time slot for Tim to give his thoughts on Limp Biscuit because he wasn't able to join us on Monday night for that one. Anyway, before we get to that, we're going to get through some hard rock happenings. So let's talk about some new singles and. The first one off the rank is going to be the new one from Corn, which just dropped a couple of hours ago. Now, with all these things we're talking about, uh, all the links you need are in the post or the description. So please do, if you can't find it, uh, check it out there. But I'm also going to put these things in the comments as well. So in the comments and in the description, you're going to find Corn. Start the healing. I've got some comments to get back to in a moment. But yeah, that's the reference track or the single we're going to talk about in just a moment. Either Dam Orange, which I'm going to assume right now is Brendan. Uh, he's going, I'm here for Timmy. <laughs> so on the official Facebook page. That, that could be anyone. If that's on Facebook, we're all on that. Yeah, it could be anyone, couldn't it? So I don't know. Let us know who's who's on the controls there. Uh, Andrew Marshall's gone two weeks of warm carton draft. I, it was the, I was there by because I looked old enough. Well, that, yeah, that sucks. Uh, <laughs> warm carton draft for two weeks is not a good carton idea, mate. Carton draft is, is awesome. Not warm, though, man. Oh, I'll drink it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, the new single that we're going to talk about first off is Corn. We start the healing. Uh, so let's go to you first, Tim. What do you think of it? Yeah, it was an interesting track. Um, and I, the first thing that I noticed was how the, the vocals were EQ'd quite differently to everything else, yeah. or to, to previous Corn to Corn songs, which um, sort of makes me wonder. Now, the last Corn album was really good. Mm, Having nice. said that, I mean, for me personally, I'm still very much stuck in the past with Korn. I mean, even as good as the last album was, and they always managed to, you know, have a couple of decent tracks on each album. I mm. really, they've really not produced anything that's made me go on. I'm going to really keep going back to newer stuff as opposed to something they released in 2004. Um, yeah. Now, this track is certainly interesting. Got great riffs to it. Builds really nicely. It's a good song. But it's also a first single, so I'll be waiting to see what the album is like. I mean, we'll see how it goes. Um, but again, um, I, I'm not too sure that it's gotten me all. I'm not too sure I'm going to listen to this more than Blind. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. Cool. All right. What about you, Dave? Yeah, I like this. Um, I was never much of a Corn fan until the Issues album. When I heard Falling Away from me, I'm just like, okay, this band's actually pretty cool. I like this. The earlier stuff, no, not for me. But, um, yeah, so since then, it's been, I haven't been following them religiously, but for a lot of what I've heard recently, I like. And this one, I like. I like how it sounds like Corn, but it's um, more haunting than towards the more mm. aggressive stuff that they did, which I think is cool. It it's, um, suits the theme of the song. And I like how there's a bit of hope in amongst all the darkness. Which shows a bit mm. of growth and a bit of a bit of change over what they've been doing from like 20, 25 years ago. So yeah, I'm interested to give the new album a listen based on this song alone. I thought it was really well done. Mm. <clears throat> See, I'm I'm I jumped off of corn. I was into them to begin with, and then issues came along and I loved it. And then I slowly sort of pushed away. I know that issues got a lot of blowback, but I love that album actually. Um and then we did the review. I think Tim and I did the last album. And I remember going, fuck, this is really good. I've missed out on some things by not checking out the albums as they've been coming out over the years. And so I was really impressed with that. And this single is, again, a bit different. Uh, the EQ that Tim mentioned is very different, especially on the vocals. The tones overall are sort of a lot more modern than slick, which they've always had that, but they've always had that sort of swing and sway kind of groove. This, had, this was a bit more tight and almost technical to a degree and it's a it's an interesting one i don't mind i like it i like the idea of where it's going it's not a, a barn burning kind of track it's not going to be a contender for you know song of the year or anything like that but it's a good track a good taste a good little teaser for the album coming up and it does enough to make me curious to see what happens next um so we'll just see what happens it's a good just sort of modern metal track with you know the the corn twist which usually mostly comes from the bass and from jonathan davis's vocal delivery which is what you're going to get you get that here enough of it anyway to, to know who it is so um it'll sound like them but i think it'll be a bit of growth 
with what's coming up, but we will see in due course. The new album is called Requiem and it's due on February the 4th in 2022. So actually not that long to wait, all things considered. But yeah, all around, we all seem to like it, but we're all sort of sitting there going, okay, we'll all wait and see at the same time with um how this all really plays out. Before we move on to the next one, Nikki has joined us. So good to see you, Nikki. Thank you for coming in. She's gone, Dave Durst's cap should be red. I it don't own a all. red hat, Nikki. I don't sit in the corner <laughs> eating glue. <laughs> oh wow all right um <laughs> andrew sladens thank you for joining us he's gone the new corn is killer nice reinvention if this is a sign of what is to come i do like the shift in sound overall i will say that they've they've if, that, if that's what the album sounds like i'll be pretty happy with it so just sonically i reckon that'll be a very cool one all right as always, we shift gears dramatically on this broadcast, and here is another one of those for you. In the comments and in the description of the post, there's another track for you to check out. This one comes from a local band called Flickertail, and it's a cover of David Bowie's Heroes. So Flickertail and Heroes, that's what we're looking for here in the general chat. And let's go to you first, Dave, on this one. What do you think of this one? Because I know you're a big Bowie fan, so how does this sit with you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a huge Bowie fan, and so is Julia. So whenever I see someone's covered Bowie, I'm just like, okay, this has got to be good, or I'm not going to be happy. Because over mm-hmm. the course of his very illustrious career, Bowie has catered to a lot of different styles. So I've often heard people pick up on a song and put it into a completely different style. It's like, yeah, it doesn't work for me. But this is done very faithfully, and it's very well done. I do like this a lot. The um, mm. They stay faithful to the original and the singer, Lots of credit to him. He does a really good job. I mean, obviously mm. he's not Bowie, but he does the song really well. Um, I like how it, it's rocked up a little bit, but not too much to yeah. make it something completely different. And it doesn't have that overproduced modern rock, too many effects sounds. It just kept it yeah. meat and potatoes, played it good, recorded it good. It's a good listen. It's a good tribute to Bowie. I like it. Yeah. Cool. How about you, Tim? How'd you land with it? Heroes is a good song. Like, it is. It's just a mm. good song. And I thought they played it really well. I mean, when you when you take that and you play it, you know, that's a song, a good song that's, you know, still faithful to the original, but also still, you know, bringing in your own flavour. Like, it's hard to fuck mm. up at that point. So yeah. I was really happy with this. And I thought it's a great listen. Mm. I'll make it three for three. I, I thought they really did a really good job with it. Uh, it's funny that if you go through the info of this one, this one was done live in the studio. No overdubs, no tricks or anything like that. It was just a live take virtually, okay, and cool. they've done a really fucking good job. Uh, there's not much to say. Like, it's been covered. It's a great song to begin with. You know, I think as far as covers of this particular song goes, I think Motorhead's got it for me. But at the same time, this has more of the – when Motorhead really gave it the Motorhead sort of grunt to it, this one – was yeah just that slightly bit more rocked up things gave a bit more bit more oomph and it was actually a nice way to do it because it's you've got that it's an interesting song and in now it's got that blend between you know, sort of haunting and, and happy at the same time and capturing that is really hard to do and i think flicker tail have done a very very good job with that as well we're keeping you know the rock and roll spirit in there too so if you're looking for a good cover of a good song Hard to go past this one. It's really well done. So congratulations to the guys. They got a, a they they broke up a while back after we reviewed the EP, and not because of us, just for the record. But um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, but, uh, <laughs> that I know of anyway. But the um, but the but they've got a posthumous EP coming out very very soon. I'm not sure about the details, but if if this gets your attention, keep an eye on the band and their socials because they do have a, an EP that's made up of stuff like this coming out very very soon. Uh, back to the comments here quickly. Nikki's gone, I'll buy you a red cap uh, no, today. Oh, hang on. But then Andrew Marshall's gone, I have a red Marshall amplification cap that Dave can have. So they're coming for you, Dave. They're going to give you a red cap. We're going to get a photo of you in a red cap. You know it's I'm going to make it your Christmas present, a red Yankees cap. <laughs> I'm not going to wear something I don't support. <laughs> What's on the cap now? Warbirds. Ah, okay. Yeah, uh, okay. cool. I can get behind that. I can get yeah, behind that. I can get behind Very that. Very good band. Yes. All right. Moving on to our next single while cables should have fallen over the joint for me here tonight. Hopefully nothing breaks when that happens. Um, still going to work out this new setup, but it's it's getting there slowly. Um, but yes. All right, cool. Got some comments coming through in a moment. But yeah, the new 
track to check out just now, which is in the comments in the post, is Zombonimo. Uh, that's <laughs> Z-O-M-B-O-N-I-M-O, Zombonimo, and the track is Camouflage. Just follow the links, uh, make it a bit easier for you. Uh, that's the new reference track or single video on checkout. Uh, before we move on, Roy, a good regular of ours on Facebook as well, he's jumped in and said, new corn okay. is modern, generic, and bland. Don't think I go quite that far, honestly. I think I understand it, but at the same time, I don't. Because for them, it's different. So it's it's interesting. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah, um, wait, wait, and see, wait and see for the album on that one. Yeah, I think so, definitely, on that front. But at the same time, if that's the best song on the album. That might be a concern, yeah. I don't think, it, yeah, if that's the best song, then there's an issue. But we'll see what happens. Um, uh, Nikki's gone, oh, I was at the gig when you bought that hat. So there you go. <laughs> and actually gave it to me. Oh, well, there you go. Either way. He's a good boy. <laughs> He is. He's very nice. Um, rocking the hair, Tim. Love it. So Nikki's got compliments for everyone at the moment. So there you go. And Michael, I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name. I apologize in advance for that. Um, <laughs> so Michael's gone. That's it, Dave. I'll get you a red cap. Everyone is so jumping in. Whiskey. whiskey, I'll appreciate. Red hats, I won't. Mate, we're going to get a photo of you in a red hat. You know that, right? You know it's happening. It's not going to happen. Not gonna happen. What if, what if we get you enough whiskey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get me enough whiskey. Eventually, we'll eventually we'll get the full like. Eventually, we'll get the full red hat Yankees Guernsey. Get the full <laughs> oh, we, gotta get the, we gotta get the flannel shirt and the baggy pants and the oh, white and the white sneakers. I'm never drinking with again. a wallet chain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the brain removal. Oh wow. Um, oh, and Michael's jumped in saying, bullshit, I will get a picture. So it's happening. <laughs> and, uh, and Nikki's going, an AB wear twins. I'm also rocking Katana card cell. So there we go. We've got the, it's all happening all around it tonight. But anyway, on to the next track we're going to talk about here. It's in the, in the post, it's in the comments now. It's Zombonimo with Camouflage. It's another local Aussie band that we did talk about a little while ago. Tim, how'd you go with this one? Oh, this is a great song. You're it just is. catchy and groovy. Big chorus. Like, even now, like, you know, you go back to the sack and you hear that chorus, bring it back in my head. It's just as mm. groovy as hell. Like, this is a killer song. And um, hopefully it gets them some traction because they, 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 they're they earning it with this one. Yeah, definitely agree with that. What about you, Dave? Fuck. Um, Tim pretty much mirrored what I wrote. <laughs> uh, as soon as it comes on, I'm just like, this is a nice, heavy sound, lots of groove, cool mm. riff, and this is fucking yeah. great. The lyrics and the chorus are just instantly memorable. And as Tim said, you can just bang, you hear it. Um, mm -hmm. It's a great song. Check it out. Give it a listen. Yeah. They had an album out a little while ago that we reviewed, and it went okay. Uh, but there were some, you know, they did, it was a self-produced thing. So there was always those, you know, little critiques you throw in there. But for this one, this sounds like they've they've just grown. Like this is a new single and it sounds like the band is just firing on all cylinders. I can't fault this at all from sound to the song itself this is a great fucking track uh if you like anything that's sort of heavy rock to metal related this is one you've got to got to get onto. Uh, if you like this check out the album it's born to paint the world red it's a couple of years ago now it came out but this one's impressed me and the video is cool to go with it if you liked it yeah it's aggressive but melodic still it's gonna really you know do it for you this is a great track and like i said if this is a sign of things to come from these guys fuck yes sign me up right now because this is a great single to sort of get the uh, the uh, blood flowing again when it comes to this band. So I'm very keen to see what they do next. I hope there's a lot more to come very, 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 very soon. I would like to hear a lot more of this, but we'll see what happens. All right. Uh, Andrew Marshall, when it comes to the whiskey, he likes the way Tim is thinking, so we're getting there eventually. <laughs> um, Sally says she reckons you get Dave in a tutu before getting him in a red cap at the rate we're going tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, possibly. He's nodding. <laughs> He's nodding. Um, and Nikki is plugging it to death now. Sorry? Nah, I'm good. All right. And uh, Nikki's gone. Go to the THRS lounge. You'll see a pick of Dave in the red hat. That's one that Nikki knocked up earlier for us on the socials. It's a little bit of fun. So check out our Facebook group, the THRS lounge, for that little image there. All right. Got a couple more tracks to go through. There's a, there's a few here tonight. Uh, we're going to move on to one now that Dave actually found. Uh, so we'll go to you first in a second. But it's Baltari, I believe it is. Um, and it's got a, a guest spot here from Marco Hiatala, which is obviously how Dave found it. And uh, 
It's in the comments. It's in the description now. It's it's Waltari featuring Marco Hiatala. The track is called Below Zero 2021, which is them revisiting some old stuff and, and re-recording things with some guests. Dave, I'm assuming you're going to like this one because knowing your taste, I figured this would be a song that would oh, you know, appeal to you. Yeah. As everyone knows, I'm a massive Nightwish fan. And when Marco left the band a couple of years ago, I was crushed. He's such a big part of the band now. He wasn't an original member, but his voice and his bass playing, his stage presence have just been lost. But it's still good. Mm. But I'm really thankful that he showed up doing something because, you know, he had these um, issues with depression as part of why he left. But this sounds yeah. fucking great. Um, it's heavier sound than Nightwish, straight up metal. Mm. There's no symphonic stuff in this. But there's a lot of melody. And Marco, his vocals in this just... He's just letting rip, which is cool. Yeah. And um, I don't know who the other guy in this band is doing the vocals with him, but he's pretty good, and they trade off each other. Good, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, I really like the lyrics Marco's singing. I probably didn't write them because he's a guest on this band, but yeah. they just sound really positive, and you know, hopefully he's in a good place these days because he's smiling in the video and he's really having a lot of fun. So maybe a change was what he needed, but it's good to see him still doing some music, which is fantastic. Yeah. And it's a cool song, so it's awesome. Yeah. About you, Tim. I really liked this. Um, mm. It's a nice, nice, heavy song with a nice, uh, nice uh, mon- melodic verses. The song builds up really, really well. Uh, great guitar yep. tone as well. So, um, I would love to hear this. You know, because are they doing an album for this as well? Yeah. Uh, there's an I album. I don't think Marco's on the whole album, but they are doing this. Is like dumb. a third anniversary a 30th anniversary kind of thing coming up next year. It's, it's a bit of a compilation piece. Okay. Well, I'd be keen to hear it because mm. judging from this, like this sounds like a, almost like a perfect single because it's, it gives you that yeah. little bit of everything, a little bit of teaser. Mm. So yeah. I, I'd be keen to hear more from this project. Uh, so mm-hmm. it is actually, it's a really good song. If you're into yeah. that kind of, um, more traditional style of metal yeah but at the same time you know it's it's, it is also a very you know modern sound so it's a it's a great track Mm. for me i thought this one had a bit of a a prog element in it not not huge but there was just a little bit of a progressive touch to the composition of it and i don't know anything about this band at all to be blunt they're a finnish band (laughs) they're apparently known for their diversity and creativity uh but I mean, Marco slots right in on this wonderfully well. His co-vocal with the with the main guy in the band um, is brilliant. The studio, the footage in this is like in studio stuff, and they look having a blast, which is actually always makes these things more infectious to sit down and watch. But the the song itself is really cool. It's it's powerful. It's melodic. It's got the, you know it's heavy hitting. It, it's all those things you want from a metal song, with just a little bit of you know that progressive touch. Not not a huge thing, but there's just little bits of it, and. This does enough for me to go, okay, I don't know about this band. I've got to go and check out more. It's, it's got that perfect hook in it, not, not as, a, as a, um, a selling point, but it makes you want to go and check out more of what this band's all about if you don't know anything about them like I don't. So if you're a fan, let us know what's going on. But, but yeah, fuck, I really was impressed with this, and it makes me definitely want to go and check out more. So there we have that one. It's another three from three in that regard. Uh, so... Go to the comments. This cap's not get gotten going away anytime soon, Dave. Uh, did you say born to paint the cap red? So there we go. Now that's the <laughs> album title. <laughs> Can we talk about music like, and not but... talk about Limp Biscuit? I see a black cap and I want to I want paint to it paint red. red. <laughs> I'll stick with the red wine. Yeah, that'll do. Um, there's a whole different song in that one as well. So we'll go with that one later on. Um, but. BP has gone, when's Nikki back on the show? Well, Nikki, you're on Facebook. You can let us know. But hopefully she's going to be here uh, very soon when we film on set. And uh, we'll hopefully be able to to get some stuff happening in that regard. And also, we're going to be bringing back the gig guide probably in the new year at the way things are going because it's going to be too much madness to try and get a dummy between now and the end of the year. So probably in the new year, look for the gig guide, which is where Jody and Nikki will both come back onto the live stream segments on Monday nights for that. But like I was saying, we'll try and get the ladies involved on the uh, the weekly television broadcasts much more regularly coming up very, very soon as well. So that's it's all going to be very big changes coming through a, lot, a few things um, over the next few weeks, ultimately, as you're going to see it playing out for you guys. It begins for us next week. You'll start seeing it in the weeks following that one. All right, one last track to talk about here, and this is from The Halo Effect. So this is in the comments in the description. So it's The Halo Effect with Shadow Minds. 
Uh, it's a new little sort of quote unquote super group that's come out at the moment. So let's go to this. Uh, let's go to you first, Tim. This is more your traditional wheelhouse. How did you uh, think of this one? What did you think of this one? Sorry. If you had told 18 year old me that um, In Flames and Dark Tranquility were basically mm-hmm. going to merge together, mm-hmm. I would cry with happiness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this track is so mm-hmm. fucking good. It is. <laughs> it's so good. Yep. <laughs> it is just uh, it, Swedish death metal at its finest. Absolute yep. finest. Michael is such a great singer. He mm-hmm. sounds sounds just as good as he did 15 years ago. Um, he's great. Song's great. Um, if you're new to this kind of stuff, don't get put off by the fact that I just said Swedish death metal. Um, yeah. Basically, if you've ever heard... Uh, Bands like Bought for My Valentine and thought the boy band vocals, they sounded great, but the boy band vocals sucked. Check this out because that's basically yeah. what it is without the boy band vocals. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, or, or, you know, bands like, uh, if you like Architect, if you like Trivium, if you like, mm-hmm. you know, anything like that, you know, bands like Dark Tranquility and In Flames are uh, the, the, the forefront of this, to, to that kind of stuff. And I think this is yeah. a great song. I'm looking forward to this album. Spent it like three or four times before the show started today. So nice. Very keen. Mm-hmm. Thought you might be. I figured this is one of the ones that's definitely right up your alley. Uh, let's change over though. So Dave, how did you go with it? Yeah. Just I'm confused when you mentioned Bullet and My Valentine and the boy band vocals, because I didn't get that at all from the album we reviewed last on Monday. So maybe, maybe, maybe that early well. stuff. But, uh, yeah, to, yeah, to be perfectly probably. honest. The last Bullet for My Valentine album I heard was Scream and Fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the last one we we did vocals. Were, okay. Okay. Um, Halo Effect. This started off really good. I like it musically. Then the growling vocals came in, and yeah, it wasn't to my taste. And it's simply yeah. because it sounds like every other growling vocalist out there. He does it really well, mm-hmm. but to me, normal singing is a lot more unique. But apart okay. from that, that's because everyone ripped him off. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay, he's the originator. Okay, cool. But yeah, musically, this is fucking great. The riffs are cool. The harmonized melodies in that solo section are fantastic. Mm. Video yeah. clip is really cool. But uh, it it's just the vocals have put me off a bit. But as Tim said, the whole Swedish death metal thing, you can hear the influence, but it's more progressive or symphonic. It's cleaner. Yeah, it's yeah. cleaner. Yeah, it's um, mm. not as harsh and hard to listen to. It's actually really easy to listen to. So it mm. just comes down to a question of the taste and what you like on vocals. But apart from that, it's a fucking great song. No, but but, but that's what the Swedish death band sound like. You know, yeah. Dark Tranquility don't sound like Cannibal Corpse. Mm. Yeah. The American bands are much different. Yeah, that's true. The, the Swedish bands, you have this kind of this kind of stuff. Mm. At okay. the gates, at the gates, Com- you know. Um, completely different to the Norwegian. The band the film yeah. Even in a dissection and, yeah. and that's like, yeah, yeah. Anyway. This is pretty cool. Yeah. I really liked it for me. I, I, th- for starters, the start of the clip where they're walking into themselves, um, like that was a really cool way the things started off. Um, <laughs> Sally, we're getting there, I promise. Um, but the, um, yeah, the, the, the new single, the way that the video clip opened up was really cool. They, they, they had like, static shots themselves and they walked into it was really really cool and then after that the song kicks off and it's just a basically it looks like something like a performance clip in an underground car park it's done really well it's really simplistic overall but it's a nice touch but then the song on this is pretty fucking cool um if you like anything with aggression and melody and cool riffs i thought this was really well done the the tones on this even the the pitched vocal for the for the growling side of it was really nice and it blended in perfectly like the, the storytelling, the drama, and the song was all building nicely. I really find it hard to fault this one. They've apparently been kicking this idea around for a while, these guys. Uh, to further what Dave said, uh, there's members of this from In Flames, Engel, Sierra, Dark Tranquility, and, and more. Like This has been an idea. It's only because of the pandemic they've been able to get together and do this thing as a project. There's an album coming, definitely. So make sure you, if you like this one, you, you keep your ear pinned to the ground for that one. It's coming soon. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to a lot more from this. I'm tipping that next year, if the album's anything like what this track represents, this could be a sneaky little one for, for next year to, to get up there pretty quick. I think a lot of people are going to get pretty uh, happy with well, this one pretty quick. If you've listened to Dark Tranquility and In Flames, this sounds exactly like the two bands merged together. 
So yeah. I can guarantee you this is what the album will sound like. Beautiful. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I like what I heard so far. All righty. So <laughs> to respond to some comments here, Nikki's gone, no, oh, BP, I'll be there soon. We are going to rope Nikki back into things soon enough. You will see. Sally's gone, can we hear Tim Slim Biscuit review, please? Very, very soon. So one more bit of business to get to, and then we're going to get stuck into this. So give us about five more minutes. Uh, and then Sumalith has gone, I like the sound of this one. We'll definitely check out more. There's only one track so far. This is the debut single from this outfit, uh, but there is much more to come. And once this cycle sort of gets, gets going, it's, it's pretty hard to stop. They'll be doing more pretty soon, I think. All right. A bit of a discussion point was one that um, Dave brought up this morning, actually. It's, you know, for, for lack of a better term, it's a hot topic for today. And it's just about how uh, – actually, Dave, you you bring it up because you sort of – you found it. So what okay. do you – where, where did this come from for you? For you? Um, on Facebook, a lot of bands post their chart positions on, on streaming and physical music sales. Um, I saw one earlier this year, Halloween. And just a couple of weeks ago, Dream Theater and Eclipse just this morning. And all the European countries, they're charging real high. The US, the UK, Australia never appears. Hmm. All three of those bands have toured here. Dream Theater quite a lot. Halloween quite regularly, Eclipse once, maybe twice. Hmm. So I know they've got a fan base here. I don't know why we're the only significant country who's not appearing on these sales and streams and views and whatever. I don't know what's going on. And either the bands have just decided to stop paying attention to Australia. Maybe we're not worth coming down here or people in Australia aren't listening, which I find hard to believe and bands touring. So I don't know why Australia isn't making an impact on these bands, um, chart positions. Hmm. It's an interesting one. Tim, do you have any thoughts on this at all? I do, because I've looked this up. Okay. Now, cool. I don't know about Halloween and I don't know about Eclipse, but Dream Theater definitely charted in Australia. They charted number 42. Okay. Okay, cool. Now, because I looked this up. I, pardon? It's just the band ignoring us then. <laughs> yeah. So, now, because the reason why I looked this up, because did Eclipse not chart at all? Because I assumed Eclipse didn't chart. Possibly. I, I don't, know. I didn't I don't believe All I right. have. So, so, here, okay, so here's what I did, right? So I looked up some recent albums and that we liked and uh, saw where they charted. Mastodon's new album charted 15th in Australia. Uh, Every Time I Die, 23. Lip Biscuit, 35. Dream Theater, 42. And then I went back okay. and looked at some earlier albums from the start of the year. Or oh, just throughout the year. So the new Iron Maiden album charted number three. Peaks number three. Mm-hmm. The new Fear Factory album picked at 15, which is incredible when you consider, you know, mm, what was going on. Not many people album. were keen to listen to it. Good album. Uh, the new album, The Pretty Reckless, peaked at 15. Uh, the new yeah. album, The Bronx, peaked at 16. Wow. Okay. The album from Amel and the Sniffers peaked at number two. Wow. That's and the, new cool. album from, the new album from Architects peaked at number one. Wow. So if okay. Eclipse did not chart in Australia, it is not because people in Australia aren't listening to rock music. It's because mm. Eclipse are not that popular. Okay. Yeah. Now, Grant, oh, actually, I don't know because yeah. I assume Eclipse didn't chart, so I'm going to go check this out now. Yeah. Because they may have just ignored us. Possibly. What about Halloween? They're pretty popular here. They always uh, have to. Let's have a look. I didn't see I checked Dream. I was going to check uh, Halloween, but uh, let's have a look. Eclipse band. Uh, uh, Andrew, what do you reckon? Just while I look Eclipse. This I reckon well, I didn't just, uh, oh, just in general. Now this this um this this is not an easy one to answer. I, I there's probably a bit of column A and column B in this. To be honest, I think that bands probably aren't paying as much of an attention to Australia being a market for them because. It's just not that flashy numbers wise. You can have a number or a top ten here without moving or, or streaming a whole hell of a lot of units or, or numbers of, of listens, uh, just because our population density is so much lower than the other ones. And at the end of the day, as much as I hate to admit it, we're not a destination touring location, especially in the current climate, because of all the restrictions getting in and out and everything else. While Dave set just goes to fall apart behind him there, but um. <laughs> But the, but so it's a tricky one. Um, 
so I don't really have an answer for for why things are the way they are in that context. I think there's a combination of the band not really paying that close attention to it, and any band would do that at the moment. It's not a, not a slight on them at all for doing it, but also I think it's a case of, yeah, because they're not going to get things like regular radio play here and all that sort of stuff, it's just going to be much, much harder for them. Like I find it when Tim brought up the Pretty Reckless only got to 15, I was actually surprised. I would have thought they'd go a bit higher than that because of the amount of pumping they were getting on, on rock radio here. Uh, I, don't think, um, are... um, I don't think the clips I can't find any chart information on at all, but anywhere, yeah. Anywhere. And Halloween, um, again, there's not, nothing, nothing listed at least on Wikipedia for charting Australia. Mm. Which, to be perfectly mm. honest, I mean, I don't, neither of those surprises me because <sighs> Australia I mean, doesn't follow the European, it follows America. It's not even that, yes. I don't think. Yeah, yes, but on. Halloween, I think, are more nostalgia bands. This is Particularly where... Particularly with yeah, I was going to get... And Eclipse, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if Eclipse is that popular outside of, you Everywhere know, else the people who watch the show. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thing is, yeah. if you're not in, if you're not, they're, they're more niche. That's the thing with these bands. That's why I was most surprised at Pretty Reckless before. But the other ones, they're more niche. It's um, they're not regular household names or anything like that. So Eclipse, as much as we love them, they're not gonna, they're not a draw. And I and I mean that with all the love. No, and but again, well. again, that's not quite true. Not because even... the Bronx charted 16th. Yeah, but yeah, you know what so, I mean. Like that. The reason why I looked up the bands that I did is because they were, I, I tried to pick as wide a variety as I could, mm. right? I mean, like, I didn't want to pick, you know, just bands that I liked. Mm. Granted, I liked all those bands, but, I mean... Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. Though. I think yeah. it's just that that Swedish Euro rock thing is just not as popular in Australia as we think. And, I mean, these mm. bands aren't playing... Like, Adam and the Snippers just played fucking... Um, yeah. Sydney My Music Poll. The clips aren't playing Sydney My Music Poll. No. no. So I, I think they're just outside of people who watch this show. They're just not that popular. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's a fair point to make. Uh, I, I think that we're inside the bubble a little bit too much, and so we get a bit shocked when it's like, well, hang on, how do people not know about this? And that's – I was looking at this from a different angle, actually. I was looking at this in case of okay, how do we get people to be more aware of these things? And this is where it comes down to using people power on, on social media and, and streaming services because you, you've made some good points about Anil and the Sniffers now, which is great to see them doing so much or doing so well with this album. Uh, I, fuck, it's a great album. It's well-deserved. But the – the other side of the coin too is at Red Hook. You know, we know and love those guys well. They are able to fund the band through streaming revenue alone now. Emmy recently yeah. an recently announced that. So there is definitely the capacity for it. So I think it comes but, down to it being marketed well enough. But I, I know for a fact, Psychoptic mm. um, are, are run, you know, basically can pay the, like you know, run at a without losing any money. Yeah. And that's what we're you know, all the time. They're on tour, they can pay themselves and all that stuff. So, like, yeah. it's possible to do. Yeah. Not operating at a loss is what I mean by that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think it's definitely possible, but it's, um, it's a case of, like, I would say that in this context with Eclipse, for example, Dave, I don't think Frontiers do the world's best job of, of pushing because they're pushing a lot of things at the same time all the time. Because uh, you have got to remember as well, the quality of the album does not determine the chart position. No, that's true. It's marketing. Because the, the, the Halloween album was flipping marvelous, mm -hmm. right? But again, like they, like I'm on, I'm just on Wikipedia, right? Yeah. And they're listing, like the, the Belgium album charts are both the the both sides of Belgium have separate album charts. And yeah. they're listed on both sides of that. Yeah. Now Australia's a bigger market than half of Belgium. Yeah. If they had charted here, it would have shown. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting I keep one. I a lot of people overseas that Australia is so far behind the rest of the world, and it's becoming more and more true with every passing day. Well, again, but like I said, architecture is number one. Mm. You know, it it just depends on. You know right how now. well the how well the album is. You know, people have got to know well, about the release. People have got to be ready to um, 
listen to it. It's, you know, people had to have access to listen to it. Like the Iron Maiden album is a great example. I mean, it's not the greatest Iron Maiden album, but the marketing for that album was flipping marvelous. Yeah. And the build up, and they pushed it, and they had physical media in every store. Yeah, they, could. they had the right physical media. They had stuff that people wanted to buy. They, knew they had a single that people wanted to listen to. They had a cool cover. And, and, yeah. and it charted really well. That's, mm. that's, that's what determines chart position as opposed yeah. to just putting out a good album. You've got to do more than put out a good album. It just shocks me that, you know, with all the hype of Kiski and, and Kai coming back to Halloween, that they couldn't have made as big an impact as a new Iron Maiden album. Because that hype alone, that Michael Kiski is back in Halloween, that yeah, should have been enough. There's a fucking lot of attention down here. If Halloween tour Australia, where do you reckon they're playing? Oh, 170 Russell, like they did the last time. Yeah. Even That's the 70, they're going to go there. That's it. They're not playing Rod Laver like I didn't know. They're not, exactly. not the same... They're not the same level of band. Yeah. I think that's, be. that's what it boils down to. They should be. They're a very good band. Yeah. They should be. They're a very good band. But, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's about the hype sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It shits yeah. me. Uh, I mean, I, I've, yeah. Most of my life since high school, I've been trying to grab people by the front and say, listen to this. It's fucking good. And they're like, yeah. no, nah, yeah. there's two-minute there's two minute pop songs a lot easier. It doesn't challenge me. And what's the next pop song next week? And the one after that? Like, mm. Do you not give a fuck about what you were listening to a year ago? Do you not give a fuck about what you'll be listening to a year from now? It, no, man. Know, people got to watch, people gotta watch uh, Game of Thrones. That's it. And yeah. the thing is, too, that we consume music at an unusual rate. <laughs> yeah, as, we're as far as we're general people go, we are well and truly in the top percentile of people that consume music. Um, so... Yeah, I think that basing anything that we think to be a general consensus opinion is, is diluted at best. Uh, but it's not about merit. It's just, yeah, it's about marketing at the end of the day. And that's where I think that you know, yeah. artists I was saying, like, like Red Hook have done a very good job. The Last Martyr, it's been a comment here about Monica from The Last Martyr and how she's been coaching bands to do things really well as well. There's a lot of this, you know, getting into things like using Facebook groups and your socials right and all that sort of stuff. I, um, I, think, I think with Australia... Heavier bands do better than rock bands. Yeah, I would agree with that, and has been the yeah. case. For example, for like like that, like I said before, that Fear Factory chart at fifteen is unbelievable. Mm. But that that would have been just people going, "Oh yeah, fucking Fear Factory." Um, and I mean, like we've seen Gajira chart really well in Australia. We've seen um, Parkway Drive. Parkway Drive will release the album, go straight to number one. Mm. Um, those sorts of albums will do better than, you know, a quote unquote like a, a rock and roll album unless Triple J gets behind it. Yeah. So I would agree with that. We haven't got enough media to cover enough bases, if that makes sense. Yeah. There's only so much reach that we've got and everything else has too. And that's where it's gonna come if you want that to change, people power and just good marketing is the only way through it, I think. Um People are saying in the comments they love these albums too, but, you know, someone else is saying, you know, I'll go through the comments in a second, but everything's been raised, has been validated. But I think at the same time, yeah, we can, as a people, pull together and change things, but at the same time, I don't have enough faith in the... No, 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 no but, but there's an important thing in here, which is you can just follow what chart positions are. Oh, yeah, that's true. I completely yeah. agree with like, that. Like, it's yeah. a, like... Chart positions well, and um, ARIA Awards are just the media saying, thank you for making us money. It, it's yeah. completely I get, meaningless. I, I should get that. You don't, if you've got people listening to you, but you know, in the course of doing the show, how many bands that we think this band's going to be fucking great, how many have called it a day in a couple of years because they just don't get the support they need? It frustrates it the fucking hell. Too many. Jeez. Way too many. Yeah. The flip side is that you could argue then at that point, Dave, that it's always been a, a field that's been littered with attrition. Yeah. This is not a new thing. The other, the, the other thing is too, like, I think there's a lot of individuals who have the rock star dream and then the reality is much different to the, yeah. to the dream. Mm -hmm. well, that's the choice. Zach I mean, Wild, Wild subbed it up good. Do you want to be a musician or do you want to be a rock star? Mm, that's it. Yeah. That's it. It's not only that. It's it's also a case of people don't really know how hard it is until they start getting into it. Yeah. And yeah. there's a bit of that in this. There's a lot of factors at play. 
um, for wider I'm just, public. I, I'm, just, I'm just curious too, right? So I, I it just it just it by the scenes. I shared a clip of uh, Steve Jordan in the chat with us, right? Do you yeah. guys know who Steve Jordan is? Me personally, no. no I'm not into drumming though. So, yeah. all right. So that's that's a key point, right? And what mm. we're saying here, because Steve Jordan is one of the most successful musicians in history. Yeah, but nobody knows who he is. Yeah, wouldn't be you know what I mean? So he played for. He's part of the original Saturday Night Live band. Played yeah. David Letterman band. Uh, plays for Blues Brothers, um, Stevie Wonder, BB King, John Mayer, Beyonce, um, fucking. Mm. Everyone you've heard of, yeah. Oh, he's played for everyone, but nobody knows yep. who he is. He's a guy. He's a guy on tour right now with the, with the Rolling Stones. He's been part of mm. Keith Richards' band for thirty that's years. That's where I know the name from. Okay, that's cool. A, yep, um, that's, a that's big where I fucking from. yeah. Wow. Yep. But like, um, but nobody knows who he is, mm. and quite often, being a successful musician is being that guy. Mm. Yeah, just being the reliable guy who can play. Yeah. I mean, there's this yeah. one guitar player that I always used to see on television clips, and I know he was part of David Letterman's band for a while, like way back in the 80s. But Paul Schaefer, who was the leader of Letterman's band, always used to yeah. say that that guy was the greatest guitar player he'd ever seen. Mm. But again, I can see his face. I've got no idea who he is. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I just know that I used to see him on every fucking clip in every fucking, yeah. you know, major touring band. Yeah. And that's the thing that... <laughs> I think that what we've got to get to the whole concept of charts, like to, to go back to what Tim was saying before, the whole concept of charts, it's kind of redundant these days anyway. It's just a case of how well a band connects with a fan base and grows it. I think that the rest is just a dick swinging contest ultimately. Personally, I, I, I don't see it being anywhere near as relevant as it used to be. It's more important now to work or play the game enough that you can get onto things like Spotify playlists and get a bit of radio play here and there or some TV coverage if you can get it. You know, those are the sorts of things. The 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 general random exposures you can get through whatever means you can get it is more important than where anything charts because you've got to try and grow your audience base much more organically now than, than things being forced because there's everyone's got so much more choice just through this thing, you know, every day these days. So... It, it's it's an interesting conversation. We could go round and round on this one for hours, I think. Um, is there any sort of final thoughts on that before we do move on, though? Or I'm going to shut up for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got some comments on this one, though, which is very, very cool. And there's some different opinions in this as well, which is just as, you know, we're never going to get to consensus on these, and that's where it all comes down to as well. It's not a consensus issue. It, it never will be. Um, so, Sally, we're going to get to your, uh, your Limp biscuit in just a moment. Uh, so Roy confirmed that it was once for Hollywood, uh, once for Eclipse. Sorry, that was the Melodic Rock Fest, the the first one that Andrew Manis brought on down here a little while ago. Now, he's also said, "I'm going to say Eclipse are not popular with the general audience," which is probably a fair assessment as well. Yeah. Um, exactly. Andrew Sladen says, "Numbers per capita makes all the difference. Touring and not bands have varying levels of popularity and fan following in different countries. That makes a lot of sense. And you see bands like Iron Maiden." will tweak their tours based on where the streaming numbers are highest. So it's, it's just part of the game now. Uh, he also says Aussie bands will always chart higher than internationals in their home market. I would agree with that to a point, but not always. Uh, Roy says Eclipse, we'd be lucky to have any radio play. They, I don't think they did on the last album here in Australia. And, and he said that Eclipse played the Elephant Wheelbarrow in St Kilda. So that's, you know, kind of where it was at. Yeah. And we we're all there for that one. Yeah. Andrew Marshall brought up Monica. He said, Monica Struff from The Last Martyr is coaching a lot of local artists on how to use the social media and streaming services, and she's really good at what she does, and their EP is coming soon too. I think it's a couple of weeks away, actually, so get around Channel that as well. Now. Yeah, December 12, I think, from memory. I might be wrong, but I think it's about that. Uh, Roy said, I had that Eclipse album on repeat for days and still on rotation. And this is not a question of talent or ability or any of those things. These are all great albums and great bands we're talking about. It's just they're getting different results in different regions. News says Halloween should definitely or would definitely skip Adelaide, and that's the thing too. If they nationally, if you think about where they're going to tour here, are they touring every city or are they just doing the East Coast? No. You know. Yeah, see, they, even then, right? Melbourne City, Brisbane is like seventy percent of Australia's population. Yeah, that's it. Um, Andrew says, prime example, Dave, you're wearing a maiden T-shirt, not an Eclipse one. Tim has a point. <laughs> you know how hard it is to get an Eclipse T-shirt in Australia? I'd yeah, have one if I could get one. Yep. 
Jimmy has one. <laughs> we got him one at the Melodic Rock Fest. So there was that. It was very, very small for him, though. So we'll see how it worked out. Uh, Roy says, Eclipse did a COVID live show and put out a shirt to go with it. I'm probably the only person in Australia who was up at 4.30 in the morning to watch it and bought the, sh- bought the shirt. So, yeah, there are some diehards for any band out there, and, and Roy is one of those ones we know well is very into things as well. Uh, Nikki says, just going to mention Parkway Drive, Tim. Sadly, more of my friends would know them over Massive Blaze, Warbirds, etc. Love Parkway Drive. No distance them agree that the heavier seems to break through better. And that's a pretty valid point there. No, but, yeah, but Parkway Drive are a different level band. Like, they're a festival headline yeah. band. Like, they they're not... Now. Comparing Parkway Drive, like, with all due respect, comparing Parkway Drive to a, a local band is... But yeah. Not the, it's not the same thing. No. And they've also gone overseas and cut their teeth in those markets to get, you know, really good at this sort of shit too. So it's a different feel. Well, they, 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 they toured overseas. Like, the first time they went over, they were over for like three years. Yeah. Didn't, without coming back. Mm. Well, on top of all this too, we haven't mentioned Airborne. There's a reason they play fuck all shows in Australia. Yep. Yeah. Has been for a while. Um, over on Twitch, don't poke the bears. Gone Dave is spot on. So we're getting some love for Dave coming in this one as well. Paul on Facebook, thanks for joining us tonight. He's gone just like Firewind. Most people in Australia don't even know them. We know them, but yeah, a lot of people, again, we That's consume it. things. Fire, Firewind are in the, fire in the, in the, in the Eclipse basket. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Agree with that. Uh, Roy has just gone, this is 100% on the money. There's a lot of different conversations going on here. Uh, Andrew says that, mind you, Shocker Mistress Charter number 12 back in July. I'll actually give credit to the band and to the label for the push they got too. So they've yeah. been doing very, very well with that. It's, again, marketing though. So, but they're again, it's a great album, but yeah. they marketed it really well and, and they got yeah. what they deserved out of it. Yeah, lots of video content for that too, which is, I think, more important than probably. But, more the, but the, the key is as well, marketing will get you there, right? Yeah. In order to continue it, you've got to have a good product. That's it. You, you and can't it just is, have, yeah. you got to have both. Yeah. And Shotgun Completely. had both. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, Paul says, Fire when Gus G and they rock. That's cool. Nikki's gone. I didn't know who Steve Jordan was either. What a, what a legend. So there we go. Uh, Paul's gone also to album Sacred Mother Tongue from the UK and Andy James. I had had Andy James before he joined Five Finger Death Punch. Okay, so there's another one there as well. Um, <clears throat> that's, yeah, there's a lot of crossover in these little weird segues we go down. Uh, news says, in the past, now we'll climb. Now they debut at the higher summer, then they drop. That's actually a good point too. Yeah. That's very different to what it used to be. Uh, Andrew's gone. I've been told promoters use Spotify numbers to find support bands, and that's probably absolutely true because you've got to make that sure that you're trying to get as, and, yeah. as that many is true. As so well, that is that's true. true. So when um, one of the reasons why Saints does well with that is because mm. yeah, we have good Spotify numbers, mm. and yeah. one of the, re- the the biggest reasons the way the Orange album came out the way it did was to increase Spotify playlists. It's not just yeah. for supporting bands. Local venues will look at it. We'll look at your Spotify numbers yeah. to see whether or not they think you can draw or not. Yeah. If you've got five <laughs> listens to your songs, they're not going to make you a headline act on a night. Five exactly. Five because you, you, they think, right, you can you can get your friends to like your Facebook page. It's hard yeah. to get your friends to actually to listen to your song. If you can get them to not actually listen to your song, then you've got a chance of getting them to buy a ticket. Yeah. And the thing is that it's self-feeding too. The more people listen to it, the more it gets pushed into things. It's the same as YouTube. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it all grows from that sort of mentality. That's where it's really important to keep that in the back of your head these days. Um, what are we going here? Paul's gone. Some of the best music doesn't even come to Australia. That's not a new problem, unfortunately. Um, but it's it better, is very, it's better very, now than what it was. It's, it's, it's good better now than it was. Completely agree. Um, <laughs> Roy's gone. Australia need a multi-day one venue festival like Hellfest or Vakin to bring these bands out. I don't think we're anywhere near that. We're nowhere near it. Yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah, I don't even think about Unify, but yeah, it just draws. It just it's just targeted towards a different crowd, but they exist here. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, Nikki's gone. Yeah, but how do they break through? Just saying, I agree. Heavy bands through Twelve Foot Ninja. Um, I loved here, but yeah, it's a mystery combo. It's it's just work ethic more than anything else as well. Like, just, having, I like think Twelve Foot Ninja, Ninja are a bit different too. Having something different, it's hard to pull off, but it, it, they they have something unique about. No, them but too, you got you got to remember as well. So, I first saw Twelve Foot Ninja mm. live. I want to say in two thousand and nine. Mm-hmm. 2010 maybe actually 2010 yeah. and that would have been their second EP 
So when I saw yeah. them, which was 11 years ago, that they've already been touring for three or four years, yeah. right? Mm. And they're all from other bands previously. So they all, yeah. they weren't coming in as green musicians. Yeah. So what you're seeing with 12 Foot Ninja now is 15 years worth of hard work. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And that's the thing too is it's the old iceberg analogy, <laughs> what you see versus the work that's gone into it. Um, yeah. I mean, our, our microcosm of that is winning the award uh, this year. No one has seen, or pe some people have, but not many know how much work has gone into it over the last 10 years to get to that point. Um, if you saw what goes into this, and this is just one example. That's not to be blowing our own trouble. It's just a general example. We do this. Bands have to do a lot more, and Tim, you're in a couple of bands. So you know the same thing as what I'm talking about now. The, the results you see, like with your streaming numbers, and that's getting you the good support slots, that doesn't happen by accident. That takes a long time to build that momentum. No, but even then, and it's important to remember as well, you can do everything right and still fail. Yeah, exactly. That's true. That's, yes, yeah. that's just how it goes sometimes. So, yeah, you know, this is the thing too. No one's entitled to success. That's uh, yeah. I think that's the a key ingredient in this conversation. No one's actually owed it. If you think you're owed it, it's not going to happen <laughs> that way. It doesn't matter how much work you put in. It's just that it just may not click for whatever reason. There's plenty of bands. We go back. Over the decades, the bands that we go sit there and go, how the fuck would there be one later on? How the fuck would this band not bigger than they are? And it just didn't work yep. out. Shit happens like that. Um, yeah, when it comes to Spotify and that, Roy says, Brad told me that's how he picks cities to play via Spotify analytics. That makes a lot of sense there too. Uh, Andrew says, I have both in Orange and Arcane Saints, my Spotify that I used to boost streaming numbers for the local bands I love. And that's something you can do as well. If you feel passionately about this, then listen to them, play them, spin them, all those things there. Um, Trust me, dude, it helps a lot. It does, it, especially these days. Uh, okay. Jeez. <laughs> uh, Paul has gone. Have you, uh, Meshiak, have you heard this band originally from Australia? Most people uh, don't even know them. We have heard of and reviewed them before in the past. We were in on the ground floor of that one. I didn't check out the second album, I don't think, but the first one went all right. Do you guys remember that one much? Not sure. Uh, no? Well, there we go. It was a good album, but obviously, but it didn't make any of our top tens the year that it came out. So, you know, in, in, in the context there, we know the band, but that's again, you can do everything right and it still doesn't quite work out. TC says, Parkway Drive built themselves up to one of the premier metalcore bands in the world. That particular genre is way more popular worldwide than most people that follow this show would realize. And I completely concur with that. That genre is blowing shit up. Not in our world, but it is blowing shit up and it's crossing over. Oh, no. It's totally, it is our world, man. Mm. I don't know much about it. <laughs> I'm old. There. Nicky's gone on you, Rusty, before 12 Ninja. I'm proud of what they've done, and yet 100% Stevic, all of them established prior. But this example is amazing and rare, but well deserved. Probably not articulate myself clearly. There's a lot going on here. So uh, don't poke the bear's gone. You can do all the right things, put in all the work, but what you're missing is just a little bit of luck, and that will all bring it together. That's, it. that's true. Another one. Yep, another one. Nudes gone. Example, why aren't Kings X massive? And that's very, very true as well. There's a lot, Thank you. A lot of them around. And uh, Conrad, and I will contact you tomorrow, I promise. Uh, I've seen an awful lot of Australian bands with the worst attitudes imaginable. They think they are owed fame. That happens anywhere. It's not just Australia. And uh, Roy says, Metalcore would be the number one genre on TikTok. Ooh. <laughs> Don't know about that, but it's up there. Probably. Possibly. All right. That conversation could go for hours. We're probably going, you know, to the point we're going to bore people to death. Let's move on to the part that I know people are requesting. Unless you guys have any final thoughts to add on this little topic here, or are we going to move on? No, I'm good. All right. We're moving on. So, Tim, you weren't here on Monday. Give us your no. uh, rebuttal or agreeance or whatever the hell you want to think or say about the new Limp Biscuit album and what we said about it on Monday night. Come on. Later. <laughs> and for context, that's what he's been doing in the chat. Whenever it's come up, every time in the chat, Tim has been going la di da. <laughs> um, look, oh, look, oh, look. I, 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 people are looking forward to this, but like, I, I don't really have all that much to say about it because the fact is, I mean, whether or not you like Limp Biscuit or not, it's just a matter of taste. And I'm not going to disagree with you if you don't like the band. I personally think the band is great, but mm. here is one thing that I do not think cannot be denied whether or not uh, you like the band or not. Can anyone, either you two or anyone in the comments, name for me a band 
more than 15 years past their prime, and we've covered a lot of them on this show, right? Mm-hmm. Not that have made a good album, but a band that has connected with an old audience better than the newer Biscuit album. 15 years now, the reason why I say this, right? Now, the reason why I say this is because yeah. it's not like Limp Biscuit were a band that um, people remembered fondly. Mm. Limp Biscuit have been the butt of jokes for 20 something years. And part of the reason yeah. is, is that their sound is so 99 to 2002. Nobody's yeah. sound, tried to sound like Limp Biscuit since, right? And nobody can try to sound like Limp Biscuit, right? And I said, we all, at some point in stage, made fun of it. Yep. But then, and I don't know, because I've talked about this to Brendan as well. I had this conversation with Drew Deadman. Um, um, I've had this conversation with a lot of people that at some point over the past 10 years, something came up with Limp Biscuit, whether you saw him at a festival or you bought to stick- you got offered a free ticket to a show and you went, what the fuck, I'll go. And then all of a sudden yeah. you stood there and after a while you realise, yo, this band's fucking good. <laughs> and they got, and they, were got, they got to the level that they got to, not because they sucked, but because they were good, and they figured mm. out how to connect with people. Yeah. Whether or not you Which like actually them or is funny in the context of what we just talked about as well, but anyway. That's my point, mm. is that this band, whether or not you like them or not, is irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, what can't be denied is that for the people who do like them, this band has found a way to connect with, with them. Yep. And like whether or like whether or not you like a band or not, it's subjective to taste. We talk about it here. We debate about oh, we like this, we like that, and all that. At the end of the day, we're, we're like, doesn't matter. Music anything. is subjective to taste. Yeah. And if people don't like it. That's cool. I don't care. I like it. Mm. I think it's great. Um. But whatever, regardless of whatever, for a band that has become the butt of butt of jokes, to turn around and then have people go, you know what, that new album's pretty fucking good, and they did, <laughs> and to top it off, they didn't hear that new album and go listen to Significant Other. They heard the new album and kept listening to the new album. For a yeah. band twenty fucking years past their prime. To pull that shit off is fucking unbelievable. Mm. Yep. So regardless of what you think of that album, this band deserves some of your respect. No, I can't do it. I've heard lots <laughs> of people on fans say that this new album sucks. They like fucking Chocolate Starfish. Well, the band like themselves that said that when they named the title. Still sucks. Yeah. yeah. They, they know exactly who they are and what they're doing. They're, they're very clever. But that's my point. They have found a way to connect with the album, to connect with their audience. Mm. I will admit, yeah, when you think back to that whole new metal era when it was but, peaking out. Because, because stuff, think of it this way, right? Think of it think of this way, right? Because at the, people will make fun of you, right? No. Oh. But there was no band bigger than Limp Bizkit at that time. Right? Corn can make a claim... Um, yeah, I'd say corn. No, they weren't bigger than Limp Biscuit though. Marilyn Manson. They weren't bigger than Limp Biscuit for that. Marilyn for that Manson specific... was way bigger than Biscuit. Yeah, Marilyn mm, Manson was bigger than Limp Biscuit right. over ten years. <clears throat> I'm talking about specifically from '99 to 2001 because that's that Limp Biscuit time frame. I'd In that time corn. frame, not, not for that time frame. That time frame, Limp Biscuit was was a band. Right, but nobody else has been able to. But they've been stuck in that time frame, and they've managed to get out of it with a new album twenty-one years later. That is incredible. Mm. It's just nostalgia. It's repeating the same ideas from twenty. But years it's not ago. nostalgia if people are listening to the new album. That's the point. <laughs> yeah, but he's still talking about the same shit he did twenty years ago. It's just nostalgia. He's still talking about chocolate yeah, starfish. The, the like in Tim's. But he's point, not. That's the point. To to the new he album. is. He's still not rapping about chocolate and starfish. It's in but if it was the nostalgia, then, people, but then if it was nostalgia, they'd go, they'd go listen to chocolate starfish. You wouldn't listen to the new album. Well, the old, the old album probably goes for an hour. This one goes for 30 minutes. It's an easier listen. People would still go back to the old album if it was nostalgia. They probably have because a lot of people don't like this new album. Hey, that's not, hey, that's not, hey, 
This new album charted higher than Dream Theater, man. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You and I can argue about anecdotal evidence. I have numbers yeah. right in front of me that show people like this album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 30 minutes is easier to listen to. Goes back to my point. You know, people like stupid shit. Hey, people make but, yeah, people but you know what? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. Hey, but here's the thing, though, right? Like well, that's wrestling. part of making an album. Part of making an album is making the album go the right length. Yeah. yeah. Attention spans yeah. have dropped. Apparently, it's too much for 45 minutes of music but, anymore. But that's the point. You make a 10 track, 35 minute album, and it's a good album, and it's a good album. It was said 10 minutes ago. Do you want to be a musician or do you want to be a rock star? Limp Biscuit chose to be rock stars. Dream Theater chose to be yeah. musicians. Yeah. It's a sad state. And that's what pisses me off about the fucking state of the world because Limp well, Biscuit just won't I, go To be away. honest with you, Andrew, and so I, I thought you were going to go. The fans get forgotten. To be honest with you, Andrew, I thought you were going to go the other way with that. Really? Well, what part of Limp Biscuit are choosing not to be musicians? <laughs> I would. Um, you're going to compare those two bands? I'm definitely going no, with Dream but, 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 if you're if you're a worker, what you're doing is you're providing a service in order to get paid and make a living. Yeah. What do you think Limp Biscuit just did? Their image. It's all image. Yeah, no, but they and they got paid and made a living. They did their fucking job. You're right. Exactly. Uh, you're right. Exactly. You know? they, they connected with their audience. But my point is that it's more about image than it is about music. And, you know, 20 years ago, no, and to be honest, we did. Hold up, hold up, hold up. 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 You could blame record companies for shit music getting publicity. <laughs> now it's completely down to the listener. Dave. And Dave. Dave. They connect with your audience and Dave. people will like that shit. <laughs> Dave, by your logic... Aria charts don't count for image; they count for listens. By your logic, people care more about Dream Theater's image than their than their music, because Limp Bizkit's music got listened to more than Dream Theater's. Yeah, I'm saying Limp Bizkit's image was more easier to accept than Dream Theater's music. But the Aria charts don't count for image; they count for listens. Exactly, and more people listen to Dream because Theater. People go for what's cool. People go for what's trending. It's all about image. You know, what yeah, fucking Limp universe is Limp Biscuit trendy? Everyone's <laughs> <laughs> fucking talking about them at the moment. They're probably it's the most because they about released a new album that kills. That's oh. why they're talking about it. That's the point. They're Limp Biscuit with a butt of jokes for twenty oh, hang on, fucking now, years. If, if the new album was a pile of shit, everyone would be quick to throw a, a, a flame. Everyone like would it. shit all over it. Yeah, it's if it, if it was they released even, an album in like 2013 yeah. that we all shit on because it's yeah. shit. And in and even even in this one, you saw my review. I didn't I didn't shit can this one. I, I you know the first few tracks gave me a giggle. Like I, I even me, I was sitting back going, okay, I want, I felt dirty listening to it because there were parts that I liked. And that's me being as anti this band. Andrew, like, I'm telling you right now, what we're Luke Biscuit tour. You're literally. coming with Brendan and I. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll go. I'll go. I will go. Trust me. Because you'll go, you'll stay, you, I can guarantee you'll stay back and go, fuck this shit. And then halfway through, you'll go, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> but the, the lyrics made you laugh. Did the music do anything for you? Yeah, the riffs that were put on the first three or four tracks are pretty cool. I also didn't mind the way they did the cover. Yeah, no, but I liked what they put together in that regard. Even Dad Vibes, there's a groove and a flow to it, which I fucking, it makes me feel dirty to say, yeah, it's a cool track, but it's well put together. So, you know, it, it's, I don't think it's complicated, but it's got a groove, a feel, and it gets you, you, you moving. And that's the point. That's what they want you to do. They want, they put songs together that the whole purpose is to get the fucking mosh pit moving. They did that enough on this album with the first few tracks. So I think I'm going to make it right. So people are going to shoot me for this comparison, but a lot of the criticisms that get made against Limp Bizkit, the same criticisms that got labeled by jazz guys against the Beatles. Okay. Oh, they're just playing power chords on guitars. They're playing power chords on guitars and simple pop songs and melodies and grooves and all that. Yeah, but they're the fucking greatest band of all time 60 years later. Yeah, never I'm, not saying the Biscuit are the greatest, I'm not saying Limp Biscuit are the greatest Beatles band of all time. But Beatles to criticise something for being simple, I think, is just stupid. No, I don't, I don't criticise for being simple. I think there's an art to that as well. I think that it's um pretty silly to... to to critique people being simple. Um, I think, I, I think Durf, simple in his lyrics are fucking stupid. 
How often well, can I'd you actually argue that. No, I, think I, I think, yeah, it, uh, there's a, Jesus, okay. The chocolate there's, star has been <laughs> some good 20 point fucking point. years ago. Get mate, 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 I, 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 I just think you don't get the joke. <laughs> it was a joke 20 years ago. It's no, when they, when, no, when, 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 when Fred Durst Bro, walks out at Lollapalooza wearing khakis and a, and a fucking yeah. handlebar mustache with that grey hair and the red glasses and the first line of the new single is, check out your dad with a swag on the floor, yeah. he's taking the piss out of himself. Yeah. No, it's an and everyone's taking the piss out of them over the years too. It's so That's ironic. what he's doing. And the difference the is, they use, they're just using irony to hide the fact they haven't grown as a band. They released exactly the same shit. They've done that. They're not the only band. You're not listening to the album now. I'm listening to that's for sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and this is where I think what happens here, though, is in in the context of this conversation, when people have their tastes and it goes to their heart a lot, and we're seeing that play out because there's no way you're going to convince Dave this is good. And I'm not saying you, you should, no. but it's just never going to happen because people, yeah. And that's, and I'm not, that's, but that's the I'm not trying to convince. I don't, I don't want, I don't no. care if Dave doesn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. I don't care if Dave doesn't like it, but the fact is, Hey, tons of people do like it. Yeah. Yeah. The thing and is, connected that, with yeah, an audience. Why music is the way it is today. Uh, to be honest that, with you, I reckon that's, where, that's to be perfectly honest, to be perfectly honest, for me personally, pop music is much better than it was twenty years ago. I'd say it's on the up. To be honest, yeah, I would agree with that. Much better. No, yeah. well, People, pop, anybody like, who says that, like, anybody who says it, has never listened to to track twelve on a Spice Girls album. Uh, to be honest, I fucking prefer the Spice Girls to some of the shit I hear these days. Yeah, you <laughs> have not listened to the Spice Girls in a while, man. Nineties pop music <laughs> is the fucking worst. I yeah, take the no, ninety as if the fucking chart music around today pop shit. No way. <laughs> yeah, easy. We're getting way off topic, but um, but there's trying to bring this back to a circle in some way, shape, or form. Um, the the I think that I mean I said in my review the other night that it's it they've done a neat trick with this album. They haven't made me a fan, but it's one of those ones where even me who has re- really not liked this band in the past, um. My review of uh, Chocolate Starfish, Not Dog Flavor Water, is online for all to see. I ripped it to bits. Um, and and the classic album too, by the way. Yeah, I know you love it. But <laughs> the, but we, we all agree, disagree, because we had a lot of fun that day in the filming session. But the the um, but for me, even, even someone that ripped that album to shreds can find the charm and the appeal in this one. I don't personally love it, but I can see how people that did like the band do love it. It's not that big of a stretch for me to see that. And I think that we should do significant. If, we should do significant other one day. God, you can pick that as a torture album Sunday. No, nah, torture albums will be the Wu Tang Clan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did we do that? No. I swear no. we did that. No, you're probably no. thinking of too too cool. Whatever we it did, is. we did, we did, we did chocolate starfish. Brendan picked chocolate no, starfish for chocolate. Watch. Last time at your place now, we did... I think Brendan picked this. Is that the one with you and me, baby, are nothing but mammals? No, that's Bloodhound Gang, man. That's them. Yeah, they fucking suck too. No, they're awesome. <laughs> this is where, yeah, the, we're getting oh, way down into the... Um, into tastes and subjection and that, but this is um this is interesting. I'll go to some comments now just to sort of try and put a bow on this, unless there's anything else you really want to add to your... What did you give it a, out of 10, Tim? So just a rating out of 10 and some highlights just to put a bow on this. To be honest with you, I love to retrack them so on the album. That's all right. Um, if I did, what would I, I... I didn't think I was giving it a rating, but I'd give it probably a nine. Okay, cool. That's all nine, right. Nine, yeah. yeah like, I mean, not bad at all. There's been a lot of good albums released this year, man. Mm. A lot of good yep. albums released that week. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mastodon was way better. Mastodon yeah, was fantastic. Our private chat. <laughs> that's, that's the... And not we're, to we're, say there's anything... We're, we're not going to disagree on the Mastodon album, that's for sure. Yeah, no, that's it. There's, there's Which different things. Which one charted higher? Pardon? Which one charted higher? Yeah. Mastodon. Mastodon charted 15. Yeah. Nice. That I'm happy with. 
Okay. So we can we can we can walk away from that conversation both in happy places then, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I'm not happy. Well, no, Tim doesn't give a fuck. That <laughs> um, Mason album is fantastic as well. Like, it is. It's it fucking around. good. Mm. Yeah, uh, I was spewing. You missed that review as well. That was that was one of the ones. It was like fuck. That was that was gold. All right. Um, just quickly on his comments because they're still coming through. It'll take me a minute to get through these ones. So Superleaf goes. I still listen to Gretchen Ghost in Nebraska. Uh, Nikki said no pressure to more to build up. But she's also said Limp Biscuit are the rap version of Nickelback. Everyone loves to hate on them, but fuck it, fans are loyal and they're entertaining, and that's where it's at in that regard too. Tom on YouTube, thanks for joining us tonight. Nickelback. Yeah, I no, just stop. We did it on the torture episode on purpose. Uh, Tom says they were extremely trended in the US because Durst kissed MTV's ass. Mm, probably more to do with the label <laughs> than the itself, but yeah. Uh, Nikki says, I also acknowledge Limp Bizkit are more than just rap, and that's true as well. This is where we started getting the conversation about which were the biggest bands at the time. Incubus were big, but not bigger. Uh, Nude says Foo Fighters, and they probably were, but at the same time, not the same genre, which is different. Mm. And again, here, Andrew Sladen says Blink-182, but again, not the same wheelhouse kind of thing. Mm. Uh, Nikki says, oh, Tim, I'd like to research this 99 to 01. Who was bigger? Intrigued. There'd be some actual research to do in there. Um, Blink, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, David Foo James. Fighters, I don't know. Because yeah. I don't remember Foo Fighters being a stadium band until like 06. No, they were pretty big early on. The The first album when it came out generated a lot of hype, man. A lot of hype. That was pretty yeah. big. Um, David James, you're so vain when we're talking about Marilyn Manson. So there's one there for us all. Uh, Nikki says, fuck Dave, what band isn't talking about sex, drugs, and rock and roll 20 years on? <laughs> and then David James says, is Dave having a shit day? Are talking about that? <laughs> uh, in terms of short albums, Nudes has said Slayer, South of Heaven was short but killer. Uh, exactly. The band. Yeah. Did Dave just say Limp Bizkit was cool and trendy? Um I don't. At the time, <laughs> Red, Red, raining blood goes for like twenty-seven minutes. Yeah, and that's a cracker. That's fucking good. Yeah. Um, David James, what about the Wiggles? Well, they were pretty fucking big. They're probably bigger than everything we're talking about at the moment, anyway. Oh uh, man, <laughs> I'm, I'm lining up to get tickets to fucking that adult Wiggles show. Would be yeah. fun, wouldn't it? It would be fun. I've tried to. They've played two adult shows so far. I've tried to go to both, and I've been missed out twice. Oh wow. Okay, we should try. They're hard to get. They bad. sell out instantly. Yeah, they're, they're fucking... I might hate them, they're fucking big. Uh, Tom says, but the new Limp Bizkit album is shit. So there we go there. Everyone's getting on their, um, their bandwagons here. Dude says, Limp Bizkit and Trinity, they've got Dave wearing his hat backwards. <laughs> well, these guys got my hat worn backwards. Now, we got to get you a red hat to wear backwards. I'm not um, wearing a red hat. Not <laughs> what about those um, orange sunglasses that he's got now? Oh, man. Get him the dad vibes going. Get him in the in the slippers with it as well. Um, Conrad says, either today or Limp Bizkit fans do not have the attention spans to listen to Life's a New Dream Theater or a Masson or an Iron Madden album. It's a real shame. That's uh, horses for courses. I like all there. those albums. Yeah, I agree. I can see the merits in both sides of the coin, but again, everyone's going to do their own but thing. That's the thing. People ah. will say, well, people who like Limp Bizkit don't have the attention span. It's like, I'm right here. I like all those albums yeah, you just listen to. And that's where it, yeah. <laughs> It's going to contradict that, that argument. argument falls much. apart very quickly. Mm -hmm. I would probably fall in the same category because I can get through them all just no, as but, fine as each other. But as you both said earlier, we consume a lot more music than the average person. I would, I would argue that the average Limp Bizkit fan wouldn't even know who the fuck half those other bands are. Yeah, that's because there's more of them. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But, you know, the, you're not an average Limp Bizkit fan. I guarantee it's like, you. It's, 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 like, it's, like, the, it's like the average Metallica fan. It's like... yeah. You guys see Metallica, no, no two songs. Yeah, yeah. It's, there's a lot going on here. Uh, Mark says, maybe people like Limp Bizkit because they remember the name of the past and they're into it because of that, whether or not they liked them. Like if you see a Dunup Tarana, it's cool. And now we see a Dunup Corolla, it's cool, even though it was never cool back when they came out. And there's an interesting point there. I don't know if it's quite the same, but there's an interesting point there. I don't think Tarana's ever got a style. Corolla's... Oh, yeah. man. I still, who, who doesn't remember Limp Bizkit playing The Undertaker to, to, to the ring at WrestleMania? Yeah, that wasn't good. That was a bad yeah, that was pretty cringeworthy. That was freaking <laughs> awesome. Mate, I, I, I was, what, I was 10 years old when that happened, so I'm like primo. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was the demographic. <laughs> yeah, you were. You were right for that. We're a bit older, so we weren't quite there for that one. Um, I, remember, I remember buying the video game just so you could have the Undertaker play Roland and ride with the bike yeah. in the ring. 
I just thought it was yeah. the coolest shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it did its job, man. It did its job. Career. Yeah. Uh, Sally says, I've seen Fred with Aaron Lewis or Stain did a song called Outside. It wasn't bad at all. Sally's own sound through the song. I mean, it's not talented, talentless. Sorry. No, he's not. And I would say uh, that he's outside by, something better. outside by Stain. Yeah, he did the duet on the, he did a duet with Aaron Lewis of Stained Outside. Um, That's a decent song, though. It is. But I think that um, on that particular track way back then, Aaron Lewis, uh, Aaron Lewis smoked Fred Durst vocally, which you'd expect, to be honest. But over the years, I would argue that Fred Durst's clean singing, his actual proper singing has gotten a lot better. That Don't Change cover was actually pretty well done from a vocal performance. So, Well, the thing is, right, when you watch him live, when you watch Fred Durst live, um, he's very aware of his limits and he doesn't go past them. Yeah, yeah and that's and smart too. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, like he doesn't... He doesn't. He knows what he's there to do. He's there to mm. hype people up and sing a melody, and that's all he does. Yeah. And he does apparently a good job. I haven't seen him live, but everyone I've heard talk about it says they do a good job. So I've never but heard anyone like, go away from a Limp show saying it was shit. I've never heard that. Yeah, because the yeah. smart people don't go. <laughs> no, but, anyway. no, no, no. Trust, trust me, Dave. You gotta, it's, it's the festival crowd as well. It's people who yeah. are walking away going, I don't want to watch this shit. And then two mm. songs later, we'll turn around and go back and go, this is pretty good. Because I've seen it happen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Like and they're, they're, Fred they're Durst, that good. Yeah. Fred Durst doesn't look like he did 20 years ago. So is the image coming? So where is the image coming into it? Okay. Nostalgia has a huge place in this world. A fan will check it out and a new listener will follow the hype. Good points there. Very good points there. Uh, David James going back up, back up. What are you going to do now? Uh, so there's one. Of <laughs> can they get those uh, ones we, coming we through? Don't, we, we don't care about that he said, she said bullshit here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nikki says, Tim raised a valid point. I thought I hated Still Panther, but lost a bet. Saw them with Brendan. Entertaining as fuck and a great show. Limp Biscuit would be as well. So there we go. Uh, Conrad said, I'm with Dave 100%. The band are a waste of space. This is not going to change for anyone, I don't think. Uh, Nikki's going, oh, my God, Dave. How many bands stay true to their roots 20 years on? A, a lot. Uh, Sumileth goes, oh, rock, paper, scissors to resolve a this. A lot of bands change. The good ones change over 20 years easily. People change, bands change, band members change. If you're releasing the same shit you were 20 years ago, you just become boring. Mm, see, but that's like the thing. That, no, see, but that's the thing. I think this band is different. This album is yeah, different are. to the last album. I just I hear the same shit you talked about 20 years ago. I think, I think that's just, yeah, I think that's yeah, just, it's, that's what I mean. It's just taste. Yeah, your no, taste, they, they your taste is making you hear the same thing. Mm. It is the same. They did thing. shift on this. No, they but shifted. They've moved. They've moved the needle, man. They have moved the needle on it. I, no, I, I even exactly. lyrically, they have for me. Exactly. Yeah. He's still mentioning no. chocolate starfishes. That was the theme of the album twenty years ago, and he's still writing songs about it. It's exactly yeah, but that was yeah, making fun of it. Callback. It's not a not a today thing. It's a callback element. That's the. There's a different it's approach. The main part of the song. It's in. <laughs> we're gonna go over this all night um anyway david says look at guns and roses so there we go there <laughs> they music because they're not the same band they were 20 years ago uh don't don't go there says i disagree 90s pop is the bomb i don't think you're gonna get any agreements from us here i don't think it's accurate nah. uh nikki oh, says oh. i love you dave it's okay you hate this album but team tim on this one <laughs> uh so and uh michael is the same i think their bloodhound gang might be shit, but they're funny as fuck. So there's another one there oh, as well. Great. Yeah. TC, if shit music is fun, then it's memorable. Nothing wrong with some crappy cheese music in any genre. If you can accept it for what it is and just enjoy it, and that's a valid point there too. It's got to be entertaining. If it's entertaining, well, then there we go. Uh, that's why Metal War exists. Well, that's true as well. Uh, question for real, Dave. Do you like Little Panther or Eat the Damn Orange? You don't seem to like satire in your tunes. <laughs> real, real Dave? Yeah, Question I like Steel Panther you. because they're way better musicians than fucking Steel Panther and so are Eat the Damn Orange. And so is Frank Zappa. He has satire as well. It has to be a good musician to start with and Limp Bizkit just writes shit music. Well, I don't know about that. I, I fucking hate that. I'd I take, I take Limp Bizkit over Orange. <laughs> <laughs> like if you, if, you, if you gave me a choice right now to join Limp Bizkit or join Eat the Damn Orange, like I'm looking at my bank, like I'm looking at my bank account going... Yeah, I know it's where you're going on that one. That's not happening. 
Uh, Sally says, a torture album is anything from Hole. So fucking bad. I was subjected to Courtney for a while the other day. Excruciating. Oh, lesson. Oh, bad. Yeah. That's Ernie, thank you for joining us. Mass and album is sick from Ernie, so that's very cool. Thank you for joining us tonight. TC, uh, disturbed a lot of crap, but have continued to be popular and released good albums. I would agree with that statement as well. Uh, Andrew says, saw the Wiggles of my kids years ago. Bloody brilliant. Met Murray Cook recently with Soul Movers Band. He is uh, officially the most famous person in my wall of fame. Very nice. Very cool. Uh, Sally says it's a fucking great song. He didn't try to sound like someone else. He did well with it. I forget which song we were talking about. Then maybe that was the the cover. I don't know. Oh, then Tom Tom's gone. The cover was shot. So it must be the cover I was talking about. Then uh, Lee's gone. Get onto the reviews, please. For Dave self destructs. Um, <laughs> Andrew says anyone say Guns and Roses when it comes to releasing stuff from twenty years ago, and well, that's true with the recent singles here as well. Uh, yeah, so You're not going to get an album though. Yeah. Anyway, Nudes goes, Dave showed love for some Zappa. He wins. So did um, David That's James. Saying rude, he Guns and Roses as well. Uh, Nikki says, I can also choose either name orange over Limp Biscuit. So is Sally. I love Hole. <laughs> so there we go, too. And uh, oh, Lee's also said, sorry, Sally. Holes live through this is awesome. So we're getting some different back and forth. All right. Yeah, well, let's I do like Hole as well. Zappa, that talent right there, man. I, I, no one's disagreeing with that statement ever. Apologies for my camera changing over halfway through as well. It just decided to shut down. I haven't, I've got a few things to sort out in the tech space there. But we're moving on. Let's get to our reviews. We've got a few to get through tonight before we have to call it a day and go to bed because I'm pretty sure Dave's going to hate us all tomorrow when he gets up early. Um, ah, so... <laughs> all right. In the comments, in the post, I'm not sure what time Tim has to get up tomorrow. What time do you have to get up? Early or not? Uh, start at nine. Okay. Not too bad. We won't be here too long. About seven. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in the comments in the description is a little track from a band called Lucifer. Uh, the song is Crucifix. The band is Lucifer. We're going to open up with our review of their album tonight. So this is Lucifer with Lucifer 4, 11 tracks, 46 minutes. The fourth studio album from the European band released October 2021 via Century Media Records. Produced by band members Johanna and Nick at band member Lunas's studio uh Fuck. Rissigman uh, and, and the Honk Palace in Sweden, just for something entirely different. Honk, uh, honk, three honk. singles have been... The Honk Palace, yep. Three singles have been released, including <laughs> Bring Me His Head and Crucifix. This is a band we've been following closely over the years, uh, mostly thanks to long-time viewers like Stephen Moore, if you're tuning in, uh, and generally they go well. So let's see how they go with this one here. Let's go to you first, Dave. All right. You know, as much as I bang on, bang on about music from the 80s, which I fucking love, I also love the 70s. The 70s was mm -hmm. fucking fantastic. So much great music came from that era. But times change, everything progresses. But recently, kids have been discovering bands from the past, which I think is awesome. Thank you, Spotify. Thank you, YouTube. And thank you getting into your parents' record collections. It's been a mm -hmm. lot, a lot of bands going to different eras, which I find very cool. Um, yeah. That's much better than classic rock just turning into fucking tribute bands and DJ samples. I like bands taking the torch and moving forward. So Lucifer yeah. do the whole riff-driven rock really fucking well. Listening to the riffs on here, it makes me wonder how the hell they weren't written 40 years ago when mm. 70s with driven rock was around because there's like some really cool shit on here. And so it's like, yeah. how did you not come up with this? Tony Iommi, what's going on? Obviously, yeah. you're going to get a bit of a Black Sabbath vibe. But Lucifer have their own spin. There's a couple of little – that's a Sabbath, Sabbath -y moment. And while mm. they both deal in darkness and menace, overall Lucifer is a bit more mellow. They're kind of upbeat in places. Um, yep. But just looking at the song titles will give you an idea of their subject matter. You have songs like Archangel of Death, uh, Funeral Pyre, and Cold as a Tombstone. You know, all that uplifting stuff that's just fun to play around with at Halloween. <laughs> um, it's a fun listen, even though it deals in darkness. Um, I like the use of the foley on the funeral pyre. I thought that added mm. a really nice atmosphere to it, a nice little yeah. thing in the background. Uh, it's the type of thing you listen to around a fire. You know, maybe with some friends, maybe just on your own, maybe with your imaginary yeah. friend. You know, maybe <laughs> if you're you know, with conversing with the Lord Satan himself, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard their first two albums. I've been meaning to go back on them, but I have heard the third one that we reviewed a couple of years yeah. ago. Um, this time around, I think the guitar tone has a little less fuzz. They're just, they're, yeah. Um, not as yep. much fullness to the sound. It's, they kind of just strip things down to the bare minimum and just let the riffs and the songs and the lyrics do the trick. Overall, it's a fun listen and sit and learn in the dark. Um, eight out of ten. And Crucifix, I Burn For You. And Cold as a Tombstone. Her fucking yep. vocals are fantastic as well. Yeah. All right. 
Cool. What about you, Tim? This reminds me of like um, when you'd see like those old 60s clips of like Anton LaVey's Church of Satan. Don't they do yeah. all these beautiful <laughs> black masses and all that? Yeah. yeah. And this, this reminds me of like the soundtrack to that. Well, like a great yeah. B grade horror movie. It's just fantastic. Yeah. Um, it's just it's just nice and dark and spooky and as Dave said, but it's also got that you know classic riff driven rock thing to it. Um, it's also a little dirty and gritty, but the right kind of dirty and gritty. Yeah, you know, there's, there's that right little touch of hair in it there just to get it on that edge of breaking up. And it sounds fantastic. The songs are great. You know, it's just a nice, solid groove. The vocals are fantastic. They suit the songs really well. Mm. Um, but they also make it a little bit unique for the for the genre, which is great. So I thought this was a really fun listen. I mean, for for any kind of hard rock fan, this is a great this is a great album. Bring Me His Head was my highlight, and again, eight out of ten. Okay, cool. I mean, with this band, if you know them, you know what you're in for by now. Um, if you don't, then they're basically following on in the bands like in the footsteps of bands like Black Sabbath. Got a big 70s vibe here. I, I feel like that 70s aspect is more pronounced on this record than on previous releases to date. And this one has a bit more focus on pure melody, which has less fuzz in the guitar, like Dave was mentioning as well. There's a lot of focus on melody on this, which is pretty cool. I mean, Johanna, her vocal is fucking stunning on everything she's ever done. Uh, it's undeserved. Oh, sorry, it is deservedly the centerpiece of this record entirely. And there's some nice, tasty lead guitar work on this one as well. Lyrically, it's dark. So it's the vibe. I mean, they're a band called Lucifer. You're going to, you know, if you're getting fucking happy in rainbows, you're kind of in the wrong place. So, you know, they, they do things that, that suit the vibe nicely here. It's all... This one has a bit of a creeping sort of a darkness effect going on with it, which is very nicely done. It, it is very much like the classic horror films from the 70s as well where it sort of is insidious it creeps in on you versus you know that it's not the slasher effect it's the it's, uh, creeping you out with atmosphere not with the the jump scares kind of a thing that's a perfect way of saying that that's that's spot on yeah um the the mix is not as fuzzy as previous ones uh, but it does still have that fuzz but it's a warmer kind of a feel to it overall which you know nothing's overcooked in this one which is a critique i've got of this genre a bit is that they tend to overheat the compressor on those tones and they haven't done it on this one which is really really nice and between that and where the vocal sits this sounds really nice overall but between that the, the guitar and the vocal is a really nice byplay on the way this one goes together underneath that you've got the you know the bass and the drum and the drums doing their thing you know giving the platform some organ hits here and there are nicely done so it's got all the classic ingredients from the old days right through this one as well there's little details too like tambourine on bring me his head that's a really nice touch in the background there and the way they were doing things like whether well, they were panning it hard left and right toward the back of the mix they give you a full-blown 3D soundscape with this, which is really nicely done as well. They put the acoustic little thing in the middle of the album, which made it flow nicely. The whole thing's got great groove and feel, but I think that the downside for this one is it can get a bit one-paced for me. I enjoyed every track. There's nothing wrong with it, but I just think that um, it's it's one of those ones where I think that you'll either you'll love it and you'll be hooked no matter what, and this band will just be another stunning album you know that this album be another stunning one in their collection or you might just skip a lot of it and that's not going to be a negative thing on them at all because they're doing what they do and they do it very very well but i just think that the pacing of certain tracks and this just just doesn't quite i don't know it's memorable but at the same time i'm struggling to find makes me go i'm going to pull it out of the cd shelf first over a bunch of other things from this year alone it's just it's a very very tough year in competition terms to make it really really stand out it's very good it's well done it just might suffer a touch from that but all that said it's well worth listening to it's a fucking great album it's worth your time it's just that it's a small critique that i figured i just wanted to note there at the end of it all but i'm, I'm like everyone else given eight out of ten uh bring me his head crucifix and wild hearses i liked that one as well so those are my standouts on this tour but the game my standouts in this were the more energetic tracks so that kind of tells you something about that as well. There's just a bit of dynamics would have been better on this one. But, hey, it is what it is. Some quick comments here. So Nikki has gone last can, boys. Let's see if it lasts as long as the last reviews. So I'm not sure about that. We'll see if Nikki runs out of drinks before we're done. Um, and Andrew says, Lucifer, a great, uh, a great. the single you linked is reminiscent to the classic 70s heart. Great band. So there you go. That is very true as well. So a bit of a, the female vocal that makes the heart reference pretty easy to gather. Now, if you – oh, hang on. Uh, is Nick on drums or guitar on this? Come a long way from Entombs, Clandestine, Lift a Hand, 
and Left Hand Path Classic Albums. All right, on this one, Nick is guitars and drums in production, but they do have... But I think he's doing more drums because he's the only drummer in the band. So you've got Johanna on vocal, Nick on guitar and drums, and you've got Martin on guitar, Linus on guitar, and then Harold on bass. So I imagine that, yeah, Nick's main role in this would be drums. So to answer that question for you, The Watcher, uh, The Watcher collects comics over on YouTube. Thanks for joining us once again. Good to see you here. But, yeah, that's that's the answer to that question for you there. But uh, as I was teasing, time for a gear change. Let's move on through because this is – we're going to keep it dark at least, but it's going to be very different in style. Uh, next track to check out is Omnium Gatherum uh, with their song Unity. It's, a, it's dropped a few days ago, this single here. So, Nikki, if you're still with us, this is hopefully one for you because I know how much you loved them after you saw them play live. So, band is Omnium Gatherum. Reference track is Origin. That's what you're going for. It's in the comments. It's in the description. Let's get into it. This is Omnium Gatherum with Origin. Uh, 10 tracks, uh, 55 minutes, the ninth studio album from the Finnish band released November 2021 via Century Media Records, produced by the band at Sonic Pump Studios in Finland, mixed and mastered at Fascination Street Studios in Sweden, what I assume would be held from Jens Bogren. Uh, three singles have been released, including Paragon and Reckoning. Uh, this album comes after a lineup change, and we've been following them with a lot of love since they did a tour here with Orpheus Omega, who are favourites of ours here at the show. Tim, let's start with you. I'm out. First of all, my yeah, you are out. Sorry, yeah. Uh, so, Dave, get a drink. Tim, you and I talk. <laughs> First of all, um, I'm assuming Sonic Pub Studios was lost in translation. I don't know. That's what it's called. That must mean something different in Swedish because that just sounds <laughs> wrong. That's <laughs> what I got. Uh, look, I think this is great. Actually, reminds me a lot of Balakor. Um, okay. It's a classic, smooth, uh, ryth- very rhythmic death metal sound. Mm, uh, yeah. Very uh, laid back behind the beat, very riff, very fat riff bass, but also kind of yeah. mellow and melodic and, uh, yeah, very bellicorish for mine. Um, I, I thought this was fantastic. I really love the, the, the sort of the, the a lot of the interplays with the vocal and the drums was sort of very that very very rhythmic vocal delivery, and then you sort of had the guitars kind of swinging against it. I mean, it was yeah. really well done. I thought this was a fantastic listen from start to finish. If you like heavy songs, so this was a good one. Uh, Paragon was my mm. highlight, but again, it's that really smooth death metal sound that um, got me. Um, if you like this band, like Nikki, check out Bellacore. Yeah. Um, or a yeah. local band that uh, do something similar. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like I do like the Balakor albums better because I think they have a bit more variety. But this was in that same vein and, and it's really good as well. Yeah. This one, for me, was a really immersive listen. You could sit there with the headphones on, just close the eyes and just it just fucking takes you away. Um, the soundscape effect they did with this, it's, it's technical death metal or melodic death metal, and it's you know, it, it fits that vibe. But what they've got with this musically, it, it's a weird me- melting pot here. But I, I kind of got a mix of if you if you put Fear Factory and Pink Floyd in a blender, you'd get this. It's yeah. kind of what I took away from it, and <laughs> both bands I enjoy, and so this is going okay, cool. Uh, I like the way the synth and the keys were used on this one, just little touches here and there, and they built the space on this nightly. The the mix on this is phenomenal. For, for a band that, you know, does the heavier side of music, this has so much space. The panning, the the reverb, all those things were used on this just so well. There's some subtle hard panning too, which is really cleverly done. And this just makes this thing just – it's like listening to it in a great big cave – but the speakers are all evenly placed at the same time. It's it's like listening to a choir sing in a, in a great acoustic cathedral. It just sounds fucking beautiful. Um, you know, it, the the growling vocals are back a touch, which aids it to sort of, you know, come through in the sonics of it. I just, I don't know. For that, though, the, the lyrics were really clear. It's, again, a case of either I'm getting better at this or just this one was just really, really crystal clear. But the storytelling was great. It fit the vibe. This has a really dark atmosphere, but at the same time, where with loose was a creeping kind of thing. This one's just an, a, a vibe that's there, but it's it's not oppressive or depressing or any of those things. It's just, it's just like you are underground listening to this thing, but it's in an underground, really well-lit kind of environment. So there's this really great byplay between light and dark on this record. Um, I fucking love it to bits. Uh, the... 
It's funny how some of the synth tones on this one actually put me in mind with the, the like 80s touches that are, that are prevalent everywhere at the moment. They had a little bit of that in this one, but it worked really nicely in this setting. It, it's something different. Like, it's got all your... The way they... This isn't your blast beat kind of stuff. This uses groove really nicely, which allows the synths to come in and the guitars to do their thing and the vocals to to really do their bit on this one too. And the clean vocals, the harmonies on that were fucking phenomenal. Like you don't normally get that level of a thought in the harmonized vocals on, on this style of music, but it was really, really well done. Um, there's still enough technical and aggressive stuff in this, but I do, I am curious about what the rusted on fans think of this one, because I, it, I'm not sure if it's a big shift away from it or not, but for me, I, yeah, I, I was curious what Tim thought of this one. And, and I'm, I'm glad that he liked it too, because I thought that, Drumming on this one was really important for me personally. It really did make the album move. It gave it a a really good pulse all the way through. I don't know. What did you, did you find the drumming to be really important on this one, Tim? Yeah, that's that's what it's there for, man. For this for this sort of stuff, um, yeah. it's there to provide your groove and, and and your swing, and then everything else just sits on top of it. Hmm. There was some beautiful lead guitar work on this one too to complement that sort of stuff. Like the groove and swing was there, but when the, when the lead guitar kicked in, like the tones and the harmonies on, on this beautiful clean lead, stunning to listen to. Um, the funny thing is that this shouldn't be as memorable to me as it is, but it, it just fucking stood out in my mind. I really did enjoy this one a lot. They got a cover on this at the end of it, uh, a track from Infected Mushroom. I don't know the original or that band at all. But the last track on this is a cover and it fit perfectly. Like I couldn't fucking tell the difference. Like they they have taken this whole thing just flows so damn well. Look, if and I think that this is a good little gateway album. If you ever ever wanted to dip your toes into this genre of music, the the technical death metal or melodic death metal, this is probably a good place to start. It's a good sort of gateway album because it's easy for anyone to take in, in my point of view. I think it's great. Uh, sit back with this one, put the headphones on or go to the, the good speakers, whatever you want to do, and really take this in as a complete listen. It's a bit of a long one, but it's fucking rewarding. I gave it a 9 out of 10. I really like this one a lot. Uh, Paragon, Reckoning, and Unity were my standouts on this one. Uh, so there we go. Uh, Nikki's gone. Fucking love this band. You called it AB Amazing Band Live, which is, yeah, we all know that she loves them. I've seen them live. Sumaleth, I'm on board with this one as well, so we're getting a lot of love for it too. Uh, nudes is gone. Catch you later, guys. About to kick off on Channel 44. Hopefully, you enjoy part yes, two of our Halloween special. So, enjoy the one over there on Channel 44. Uh, Conrad says, Music is great. Vocals ruin it. Not my bag, but I don't say that it might not flick my switch. It might flick someone else's, i.e., different strokes, different folks. Um, and I, I, I fully get that, but um, that's it there. Uh, Mark has said, Have a good night all. Kicking over to 44. Mark, I'm putting your thing in the bin later on. So, check that later on just just so you know that but thank you for joining us for a little while there as well and nikki also said ab's review pleases me re <laughs> omnium gatherum so a bit of love there for that one all right <laughs> we're gonna go through very different bands tonight and this is a very different artist in the context this is unlike anything else we've talked about tonight this one in particular yeah. uh this is john five is next john five is the artist the song for your reference track is land of the misfit toys uh, so John 5, Land of the Misfit Toys. That's your reference track. It's in the comments. It's in the description. Check it out as we move on to this one. This is John 5 with Sinner. 10 tracks, 34 minutes. The 10th solo studio album from the American guitarist released October 2021 via Big Machine Records. Produced by Barry Pointer at Riot House Studio in California with the drums captured by Gilby Clark at Redrum Recording in Los Angeles. So far, a couple of singles have been released in Cape Passa and Euphoria both of which feature guest spots from Dave Mustaine and Carla Harvey, respectively. Uh, there's also a guest from Peter Chris on this one, and there are a few covers on this one. The last album uh, was one that was either loved or hated by us here at the show. Uh, so let's see how this one goes this time around. And Dave, we'll start with you because you missed the last one. Cool. Ten solo album. Yep. Fuck, i got a lot of catching up to do. This is <laughs> really fucking good. Mate, if you like it's this, check off. out the last album. Mate, if you like yeah, this, the last have... album... Yeah. Okay. This starts off as you would expect a metal guitarist doing an instrumental solo album. The opening yeah. song, Welcome to the Island, lots of melodic lines in the playing, and it quickly moves into the menacing riffs of the next song, For I Have Sinned. This yeah. track contains plenty of shredding, sweet picking arpeggios, and overall dynamic playing. If you love that shit, this is done really fucking good. Um, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people will consider this to be guitar wankery, but I fucking love it, you know. 
And if somebody has to do it, if people forget how to do it, we'll just be left with the one note fucking solos. And they're always shit. <laughs> but as far as albums go, this isn't a one trick pony. The sounds he gets out of his guitar are fucking amazing. And he can certainly play his fucking arms off. There is enough changes and dynamics in the songs to make them interesting. This is just such an easy listen on repeat spins over and over. Euphoria was interesting um, with the chick okay. from uh, Butcher Babes. Um, yeah. Had a bit of a dance music vibe to it, but the solos yeah. were cool enough that I could kind of ignore that. I didn't don't like that whole build up and then the drop and all that dance music shit because one, it was predictable, and two, I don't like that music to start with. But it's all <laughs> done on the electric guitar, so it's kind of like, well, fuck you. You think you can do everything I do on a keyboard and fucking samples? Well, fuck you. I can do that while your shit on a guitar. So I kind of <laughs> like that attitude. Yeah. Uh, Creep Show. That was a fucking banger of a track, man. It's such a great song, yeah. and man, you can play. Um, the song How High the Moon, there's some staccato yeah. picking in that, and holy shit, that was a fucking amazing moment for me. That just sounds awesome. That's a awesome. jazz standard, man. That's yeah. a jazz standard. I fucking love that. You know, yeah. And he must have spent countless hours working on his technique to get that right. And most people yeah. wouldn't appreciate it anyway, but if you like uh, jazz musicians like Kenny Burrow and LD Miola, yeah. You're going to fucking love this, okay? Yeah. You know, people often say, you can't just listen to rock and metal. You've got to listen to hip-hop. Well, fuck hip-hop. And fuck you. You can <laughs> listen to rock and metal all the time. But if you want something different, different, check out some jazz. Jazz is fucking cool, especially jazz guitar. Cool to hear Dave Mustaine on Cupasa. Um, yeah. He brought just a whole different energy. It wasn't exactly – there's no lyrics. He's just, he's just saying Cupasa, basically. That's but, uh, all it, it was. It, yeah, it's cool to hear a little bit of spoken word in there. It just mixes yeah. up that little bit. The cover of Crazy Little Thing Called Love. I fucking love Queen. I love that song. I'm going to have to play it to Jade because she loves that song yeah. as well. I just love cool. how they incorporate... I love how they he incorporated the vocal melody into his playing. Just put his own yeah. spin on it. It was be- exceptionally well done. Mm-hmm. The cover of Georgia On My Mind is really well done too. Such yeah. a classic song. I like that little um, introduction to it and it's just bangs it out in a couple of minutes and just a nice way yeah. to close the album and just show a different side to him. You know, a lot mm-hmm. of metal guitarists have so many other influences and that the good ones have lots of other influences in different genres of music. That's what makes yeah. him a good player and a good musician. Um, I knew John Five was a good guitarist. I knew he worked with Marilyn Manson and David Lee Roth and um, Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie. <laughs> but, yeah, but I've, I've never given any of his solo stuff a uh, go before, but I've obviously overlooked him because it's just fucking great and I haven't given him the credit he deserves. He's fucking amazing. Um, nine out of ten for I have seen How High the Moon and Creep Show are my standouts. Cool. Now, Tim, you struggle with the last one. <laughs> yeah. Any better this time around? Oh, yeah, this one's great. Okay, cool. Now, the reason why the last one sucked is because it was just weird for the sake of weird. Mm. Um, there was a lot of electronic bullshit that was just added in for the sake of adding it in. The opening track of that last one, if you remember, was just him repeating his name through a synthesizer for six minutes. <laughs> um, I think that's that not this album. Yeah. That, that, that's not this album. This album is a proper album put together. Don't get me wrong, it's a little bit quirky as well, but yeah. it's, it just sounds like John 5 being John 5. And that's a mm-hmm. much better album. It sounds like a much more genuine album. It sounds like an album that he should have made last time. Um, as Dave said, his playing is fucking phenomenal. Um, his technique is great. Um, and I think his songwriting is fantastic because, again, you know, I said it before with guitar albums, you know, you've got to actually write songs. If I can, yeah. if I can just hear a regular song with a verse and chorus, I would just listen to a regular song with a verse and chorus. It would give me a reason mm-hmm. to listen to it. And this gave me a reason to listen to it. Cool. Well, everything was uh, played really well. I thought... Um, you know, even like as I said, as you said, with How High Is The Moon, you know, when things needed to breathe and, give, you know, pull the guitar back, he pulled it back when he needed to and he, and he pushed forward when he needed to. I thought the album was put together really well. It actually flew by for me. Um, yeah. When it was over, I was kind of like, oh, what the fuck's already gone? But, yeah, this mm. is a fantastic album from start to finish. And if you like the guitar wankery, um, <laughs> played really well, then check this out. Um, if you're going to do a guitar solo album, this is how it should be done. Yeah. Like Dave, I gave it a 9 out of 10 as well. Nice. And my highlight tracks were How High is the Moon, Land of Misfits Toys, and Georgia on My Mind. Nice. Cool. 
with John Five, unlike a lot of other guitarists out there that do these albums, he always does something different. There's always some wild twists and turns. It's not a he's not Wolf Hoffman where he goes and gets an orchestra to do stuff with him, but he's not um Ingvar Malmsteen where it's just non-stop shred for the sake of shred either. This is Everything he does has there's a bit of humor in it to a degree. It's a it's a, it's a little bit Ingve. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, hang on. There there is some Ingve in there, there for sure. Now there's plenty of guitar wankery here, but what I like about this verse is what I can't deal with when it comes to the Ingve stuff. Well uh, credit where due the last album surprised us all. Um uh, but the this one it, it's built around the, what Tim said, the composition, the songwriting, that stuff is what hooks me into this one. And the the sweeping notes and the arpeggiated shit and all that sort of stuff, it, it fits the songs. And so it's it's song first with all the glorious little bits and pieces you want over the top of it to give you all the wank fest stuff that you are looking for. But at the same time, you get really dumbed down, stupid tracks like Euphoria that I fucking love because it's built around a riff and a groove. And so you've got all the guitar wank in the world and you get all the silly stuff in this one too and then you get the really just straight ahead, here's a riff, here's a groove, we're going to just settle into this one for a bit and, and build it up and drop it down and it's going to be easy to take in. This is a relatively short listen that takes a wild fucking ride. It's, it's if you like guitar work at all, you got to listen to it. But if, if, like me, a lot of the guitar ones just sort of don't quite grab you, John 5 is one of those ones where because it's so diverse across listen, it's really worth your time because it, the diversity is what makes it interesting, and none of his albums are long either, so it's really easy to get through the half hour. But the um, the other side of this one too, in this one in particular, was the jazz touches were nice on this. The more stripped back acoustic moments were really nice on this one too, and it all really flowed together. the The cover of Crazy Little Thing Called Love is really well done. Uh, all the work on this is good. You know, the, the guest spots from, you know, Dave Mustaine and Carla Harvey are fucking, you know, they may as well not be there, to be honest. I mean, que pasa makes sense in the context of the song, but it's really just literally two words. And it's just, you know, you get Dave to say que pasa into the microphone and then just cut it and paste it over the track. Um, <laughs> Carla Harvey was even less than that. We're just saying whispering euphoria into a microphone and then it's done. But but it works. And that's the thing is it works. Sure it's... <laughs> but it works and in the way this thing is all, pieced together all, all I can hear in my mind right? yeah no, go on, say? Go on, go on. okay <laughs> <laughs> you're going to say something I was say, all I can hear in my mind is as was, all I can hear in my mind is whenever you say don't, 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 don't say okay, pasta, I can't hear the song I just hear like an over exaggerated <laughs> Dave Mustaine voice in my head going, Kid Pasta. <laughs> and that's true. That is true. Like that, like, and that's... Like, like I'm, hearing, I'm hearing the Dave Mustaine from that acoustic live album we did a few weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Definitely. But that's the day one I'm hearing in my head going, Kid Pasta. <laughs> But it fit. It worked well. That's the thing is you've got these different twists to what is normally just a pure shred fest or something that goes and puts you to sleep. This is something, I don't know, I love what they do. The production's great on this. The tones are fantastic. The mix is glorious. All the little details are here. And it's it's been really well put together from top to bottom. The, this is a really complete representation of how to do this sort of music. Uh I've, I've, I'm a fan of his work. I like the last album more than this one, but this is a fucking good follow-up to it. At the same time, Tim didn't like the last one, but he does like this one. So you're going to get, you know, that different point of view happening on a few different things here. But I really did enjoy this one a lot. Uh, I don't know. It's a lot of fun. I think that, for me, that's the thing that sells me on John Five is that his albums are always fun to listen to. You get all the technical stuff you want. You're going to get all the wank fest, all the, all the I can do this and, and you can't because you're average Joe. That's all great, and, but it's all presented in such a way that anyone can listen to it and not be put off by it as well, which is a neat trick. It's harder to do that than you might think. So I think it's a great album from top to bottom. I really do enjoy it. Nice little jazz touches and, and the um, classical elements on things like Creep Show too. Like there was some really genuine, you know, a melting pot of a lot of different stuff in this album. So it's one of those ones to listen to because no two tracks are alike from top to bottom on this. So I gave it a 9 out of 10 as well. Uh, Creep Show, Euphoria, and Land of the Misfit Toys were my standouts on this one. Got some comments coming through, which is cool. Uh, when it came to the previous album, uh, Om Omnium Gatherum, uh, Sumale says, just think of the vocals as another guitar, and that's actually not a bad way to think of it as well when it comes to that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah. Mark says, 
I can get into John into this John Five, which is cool. Uh, Sumalet says, really like this single. Might need to check out the album as well. Okay, cool. Getting some good feedback cool. on this one. Uh, David says, 44, we're there. So that'll be the people that are tuning in on Channel 44 in Adelaide. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hopefully you'll catch the rest of this broadcast later on. Sally says, oh, no, Dave Mustaine on that song, hated. What was the point of him being on it? I'm going to call it charity. So <laughs> it's a bit of fun. It's a bit of fun. Um, if it was charity, it'd be, if, if it was charity, it'd be fucking um, David Ellison. But um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, his DNA is all over this. Yeah, let's not go there. Uh, Conrad says, if it has Dave Mustaine on it, then I am sold. However, to look at this objectively, it sounds rather impressive, so at least some interesting original sounding playing. Def has his own style, and that's absolutely true about John Five. Is that It's very hard to do it, but he's very much got his own style. Uh, Nikki says, fucking love me some guitar wankery, which is true for a lot of us here. And Ernie yeah. says, glad to hear it's a great album. Big fan of John Five. Never, never really dived into his solo stuff too much. This album sounds like the perfect intro to a solo work. It is. And like I will speak highly of this one and the previous one as well. But yeah, it won this one won all three of us over. So that's saying something right there. It's not often that that happens. So take that for what it's worth. I mean, fuck, we can't agree in any way, shape, or form anywhere near each other on Limp Biscuit, but we can all agree on John Five. <laughs> No. Don't bring up that fucking band again. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was worth it to get the response. All right. Main event time. Time to get to the main event of the evening. So in the comments and in the post, check out a little track from a band called Armored Saint. I mentioned earlier on we're going to talk about a band tonight that, you know, you might think, why the fuck weren't they bigger? Probably this band here. So Armored Saint with Symbol of Salvation. A big thank you to TC and our Patreon crew for voting this one in because got a lot of love uh, on that one too. If you want to get onto the voting of these classic albums, check out our Patreon page for more info. Uh, but this is Armored Saint. Uh, the track you're looking for is Reign of Fire. We're going to talk about the classic album Symbol of Salvation now. So Armored Saint, Symbol of Salvation, 13 tracks, 56 minutes, the fourth studio album from the American band, released May 1991 via Metal Blade Records, produced by Dave Jordan. No real single or chart info on this one at all, but it ranked at number 424 on hard on Rock Hard Magazine's 500 Greatest Rock and Roll Metal uh, Rock and, and Metal Albums of All Time. Fucking mouthful. Um, this was the band's last album before going on hiatus until 1999. Was their first with Jeff Duncan on guitar after original guitarist Dave Pritchett passed away from leukemia. Although the songs here were written and demoed with him, and there's a solo from him on the track Tainted Past. This album is this week's classic review as chosen by our Patreon supporters. So thank you for getting in on this one. Time to go to the classic album and let's go to you first. Who went first last time? I did. Dave went first. So Tim, bring it home. All right. Um, just, oh, had this band not been bigger, it's probably a fair assessment of Alvin Saint, to be honest with you. Um, mm. This is really one of the classic thrush albums. Yeah. Um, that and unfortunately is one of the more overlooked ones because I mean, realistically, there's uh, outside of you know your, your obvious ones, there's not many thrash bands that had released albums this good, particularly at this point in time in their careers. Yeah, around 1990. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. And when you listen to it back today, um, fucking 31 years later. It mm -hmm. still sounds fucking incredible um, and nice and fresh today. The vocals yeah. sound incredible. Guitars are incredible. It's, it's really well recorded. And the songs are so incredibly well written. I mean, you know, you, like, um, it's amazing that Armand said, you know, you know, this album didn't blow them up because it's mm. really, you know, one of the better thrash albums, better thrash albums you'll ever hear. Um you know, and it's one of those where you just kind of look through it and you go, if I pick the dud, you know what I mean? Mm. There's yeah. really no weird track on it. I think it flows really well. Mm. Even the softer moments that build up to the bigger moments, um, they do, yeah. they're done correctly and they're timed out really well. Um, there's also Earworm on here, which is great, and some of the guitar solos as well. It's absolutely like yeah. they're, they're so spectacularly well written. I mean, there's the right... The right level of, you know, wankery, but also, you know, sticking your head yeah. a little bit as well. It's starting to crazy guitar solo. It's an mm. all-around classic album. I mean, if you've not heard this, you, you, you really, you're really really missing out because this is right up there with the – alongside the, you know, the Raining Bloods and the Justices and, and, and all that as far as, you know, classic thrash metal albums go. Um, so it is a classic. I give it nine and a half out of ten. I think it's one of my favourite albums. 
uh, out there yeah. dropping like flies and uh, very question of my two highlights. But again, as I said before, um, throw all the songs in a hat, pick out a random one, listen to yeah. it, and they're all fucking good. <laughs> yep. Well, Dave, I know you're a big John Bush fan, so... Yeah, How do you... I have been a big John Bush fan since Sound of White Noise when he joined Anthrax. Mm. And because of that, I've known of Armored Saint for many, many years. I never yeah. actually listened to them until last year when they released Punch the Sky. Mm. And that was a fucking great album. And been busy, but I've been meaning to go back and check out some of their back catalogs. So when, we put, when yeah. I put this on, when it was on the list, I've been pissed off with myself ever since. I've been kicking myself for my first fucking listen because this is so good. I can't believe I've overlooked it for so long. I mean, mm. 91 was such a fucking significant year in music. There were so many great bands, and somehow I overlooked this one. But I'm thinking back to when I was a kid. You know, I didn't know of this. and I didn't know of Armored Saint until he, John Bush joined Anthrax a couple of years later. And when you're a kid, you don't have that much money. And when you do have money, you're going to buy the bands that you know. So, yeah. like, I know I'm at state, but do I want to spend my money on what I haven't heard or do I want to buy something that I know? Now, if yeah. this band came out now when people have such great access to music, they'd be a lot fucking bigger and deservedly so. That's um, a good point. I, yeah. yeah. I, agree. Fucking, I don't know if it's exactly fresh. It's got the, you know, 16th note chug, but it's not as fast as a lot of fresh in the previous day. Mm. But, you know, if you compare it to the Black album, it's heavier yeah. maybe less less diverse but you know, this is a different wheelhouse but it's heavier than your average metal band but not as freshy as other fresh bands but mm. overall fuck john bush sounds amazing on this i mean he would be one of the most underrated singers out there i mean he almost joined metallica and it would be a different world if he did that but yeah. wow. you know, some people thought john bush almost joined metallica just like mm. Yeah, but James Hetfield, but, you know, John Bush could have joined Metallica and they would still probably be as big as they are because he's got the fucking chops. I mean, yeah. you can hear what he did in Sound of White Noise all through this, but there's a bit more soul and a bit more passion in there. He's not really confined to the heavier yeah. and darker sound that Anthrax were writing for. And it's just really cool to hear something different from this guy. I, I knew he was a great singer. I didn't know he had such a great range and such great passion to his singing. The Last Train Home and The Truth Always Hurts. Yeah. Fuck, there's some great screams and wails and just the way he delivers the vocals yeah. is just something really unique. Mm -hmm. As far as composition goes, Tribal Dance, that's a very yeah. cool it's yeah. a bit of an experiment. It worked mm -hmm. really, really well. And the fucking solo in that is so good. And the clear notes, they have like the quieter moments and just whoever this, I don't know much about this band, but this guitar player's got some fucking chops. Yeah. I mean, once again, the clean tones on Last Train Home, it just sets that nice backdrop for John Bush to get his story out there. The lyrics are mm. really well. He, he wrote most of these lyrics too, I think. I think mean, you know, yeah. writing lyrics like this, probably not just his singing, but his ability to write great stories, probably appealed yeah. to Anthrax as well. You know, they, 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 they really yeah. bagged the good one. And, you know, I would love Anfrak. I, I love Joey's back with the band, but man, bring Bush back as well. Mm. Have both. Have fucking both, man. There's no reason why you can't do that. Um, Halloween did it. <laughs> yeah, Halloween can do it. You know, have half a set of each. You know, just have the whole thing. Now, these songs just instantly catch you. This can't be background music. It just grabs you by the fucking yeah. throat and forces yeah, you to pay attention. And as yeah. Tim said, there's not a dud moment. It's just one song. Mm. The I remember my first listen like last week. And you got Rain of Fire, Dropping Like Flies, um, Last Train Home, this Trouble Man. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, when is it going to give me a bad song? I can't write all mm. these songs in the fucking standout, but it's just deliver song after song. Um, yeah. I like how the songs are different in length, the tempo changes, there's diverse themes to the lyrics. Uh, mm. Every song hits the mark, and there's really no bad moment. Um, got a bit of a punky edge to Hanging Judge. And you know, I'm not a yeah. massive punk fan. Uh, well, the reason I don't like punk is because, mate, like the shitty vocal delivery and just the, the poor production. But that yep. punk edge really gave it that energy. And I, I like the energy, but do it cleanly, for lack mm. of a better term. And it's know, fucking mean, yeah. energy. But yeah, um, nine and a half out of ten, this album fucking rules. And you know, I, I can't pick a dud moment. Every song's a standout. Mm. Um. Yeah, well, let's make it three from three. Uh, I'm one of those ones that's guilty of overlooking the band, and I've put my hand up in that in the past. It's just one of those things where 
you don't get around to everything in life, and this is one of those ones. Um, now, I've heard of this. I've heard it talked about for ages. I'm so glad that this got voted up because it gives you that kick yourself in the ass moment to go, fuck, okay, this is impressive shit. First off, this sounds fucking brilliant today. Uh, the mix is fucking fantastic. The clarity, the depth, the whole lot, the tones are to die for. The mixing of things like the harmonies on this is just so fucking good. I could listen to this record. It's got just enough sort of growl to it too, though. Like it's not a soft touch at all. This has enough bite, enough edge, but it's got some really beautiful stuff mixed in with this one as well. If you can think of, like to me when I was listening to this one, it was a bit of a um a crossover between Cowboys era Pantera with, you know, classic all-time great Skid Row. You put that in a blender, you're going to get something yeah. like this. Um, but again, that. yeah, you know, that with a, with the more thrashy bass. But then you also get things which are kind of contemporary because for some of the vocal parts where they strip things back, I got like a Lane Staley vibe in the vocal delivery on the slower stuff, the more the, the more tortured stuff. So for me to compare him to Lane Staley is saying something in itself because he's is that good like the vocal tone delivery is just wow okay this is impressive stuff and his range of emotive performance in the vocal is fantastic he does whatever the song needs and does it exceptionally well there's some blistering lead work on this one as well you know if you like your, your riffs leads and vocals then fuck this is gonna make you happy no matter what uh but I loved how the rhythm section got to shine on this one too. They may, they know how to strip things back or to pull things back and let the drums and the bass take the lead on things and then to also, you know, let it really push songs like Tribal Dance, like you're talking about the rhythm in that, and that's a different thing. Like none of this is – no one, you can't find a dud song in this one, but it, there's so much diversity within the list, but it all ties together exceptionally, exceptionally well. It's very hard to pull off an album like this. I think that the only slight critique I could give it is it might, might – be a touch on the longer side, but at the same time, I wouldn't know what you'd do about it. I wouldn't know what to do about it because everything here is like, what do you choose to cut or what part of this do you cut? I think maybe you could have trimmed 30 seconds off of it by maybe culling just a touch of an end of one song. That might be it. That might be it. It's pretty hard to fucking fault this one. Uh, it's not all nuts. It's not all full on metal. There's some nice slower stuff. Like the middle of this album really does slow things down and it builds back in nicely toward the end of it too. Like the... Uh, you've got an epic track toward the Untainted Past, which is like the longest track on this thing at seven minutes plus. That's a really nicely done track. That shows you the composition chops. But across the whole album, when you get to things like um, Last Train Home on this one, but also, what is it, Another Day? That song, how it starts off sort of slow and then builds and it starts yeah. to kick in the back half of the album. Like, that is the great, like, the, the instrumental track in the middle of the album, that one sort of follows it. That this whole th like your yeah, half-drawn bridge is a really cool instrumental in the middle then you got another day which sort of starts off slow and then builds and builds and builds and that kicks off the second half of the album in the in before that you got always hurt oh the, sorry the truth always hurts which is like the the most ballady kind of thing here like this is really fucking well done the whole craft production performances songs you know the album flow the whole fucking thing is just what the fuck this is so bloody good and and you know we've checked out the previous album checked out this one now They've got like nine studio albums, I think. So we'll try and arrange a special on this guy, on these guys at some point, I think, because there's a lot here to go through and I've not heard anyone say a bad word about them. It's just one of those things where you go, fuck, this should be a lot bigger. Like how this didn't get the same credit yeah. as other albums at the time is fucking beyond me. Like I just, this is equal to those albums, better than some. It's just, I don't get it. Uh, if we were talking about meritocracy, this is right, right up there. Again, you can do everything right and it just doesn't quite click for you. Hence back the conversation at the start of the show. And this is one of those ones, but just fuck, this is fantastic. Um, yeah, if you haven't checked this out, do it. If you like metal or heavy rock, if you're watching us, this album now, if you've mm -hmm. overlooked it, get onto it. Otherwise, right. in the comments, people are saying that they do know this one are going, where the fuck have you been all my life? That's <laughs> where it is now. So <clears throat> better late than never. Uh, this is one of the ones to check out. Nine and a half out of ten from me as well. Rain of Fire is a kick-ass fucking opening to a record. They've got that here. But also Burning Question, Last Train Home, and Another Day. I love this album from top to bottom. It's fucking fantastic. TC, you've been advocating for this for quite some time. Thank you for doing so, and thank you to the Patreon crowd for voting this one in as well. 30th anniversary for this album this year. Fuck me. Well done. Um, love it. All right. 
Sally says, I was going to say the same thing. This band should have been much bigger. Perfect example and point of the previous conversation. Great band. TC says, lots of bands get called underrated, but these guys are the true definition of the word. <laughs> this album is phenomenal from start to finish. John Bush still sounds as good today. If you like this, then check out the recent live version of this album. It sounds like it was recorded back in the day this album was released. Fuck, that'd be cool. Okay, go, go check that out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Conrad says, ever listened to them back in the day at all? Uh, I have this on cassette somewhere, but never really gave it a listen. Listening to it now sounds rather solid. I do remember seeing them at Billboard a few years ago. They were good. Ernie says, bring back Bush, which is, I think a lot of people are saying that one here tonight. We, we uh, Andrew Bush. Slater, yes. Love Andrew Bush. says, John Bush is I, I so like underrated. <laughs> the guy just keeps getting better. Armored Saint are just an incredible band, period. Uh, TC says, never listened to, they've never released a bad album. And Andrew says, well, a weekend listening sorted. So we're giving people a lot of stuff to check out here tonight. But this is, as far as classic album reviews go this year, it's probably the best one we've done, I think, um, to be so unified on it as well. Yeah, it's it's up there. If not the best, it's right up there. This is a fucking yeah. This is a cannon going off. So yeah, I'm glad the Patreon crew voted this one through. Uh, very world. very nicely done there. Uh, thank you for that one, people. This has been good to go and finally because it takes that to force us to check these albums out because we do listen to a lot. So to go back to these ones, sometimes it's gonna be pushed into the direction because of things like that. So I'm glad this one got up. It's it's nice to go to. All right. But that brings us to the end of things tonight. So please do check us out. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe. All the usual things are there. So details are in the description of the post. Whether you're watching live now with us or you're tuning in later on via audio or video, we appreciate you taking the time to sit with us and uh, take in our antics. Hopefully you took something out of it. Make sure you give us your feedback, your thoughts. As always, they're welcome. So to follow us to do that, all the details you need to do so are in the comment or in the post or the description of this one too. A big thank you to our fantastic sponsors, including Storm Printing, Alt Cult and Rockstar Finance as well. Uh, their details, just like ours, are there to find and follow. Give them a like, show them some love. Just give them a bit of help for what they do here for us at the show. And a big thank you to certain Patreons of ours. So TC, Tim Caterson, uh, Lee McDonald, Sonia Donabella, Andrew Marshall, 16 by 9 Beck Mitchell, Carolyn Mallett, Jason Winch, Marty Powell, Sam Biondo, Trash Vegas, Andrew Heyman, Brendan Ellison, uh, Daniel Bateman, Gwyneth Richards, and the Mann family. Thank you so much for your support. Greatly, greatly appreciated. If you would like to help us out and get a shout out like that or to get involved in the polling or even just get like 50 new tracks sent to you a week, uh, please check out our Patreon page. There's a few different tiers there. Even if you can just give us a couple of bucks a month, it all adds up. Uh, it does make a big difference what we do here and allows us to do a lot more. Uh, what else we got here? We've got streams coming up all the time now. It's going to get a bit up and down over the next few weeks as we get toward the end of year production. We're halfway through November, just about now, which means we start to really wrap into end of year production schedule. So it's going to get a bit sort of hairy. We'll see what we can do. Uh, but for now, the plan is still to be here on Monday as our next stream. We'll uh, set up the playlist and that uh, in the morning for everyone to go and check out what we're going to do this week. Uh but I think that's about it for what we've got to get through tonight. Our next special is Motley Crew at the end of the month, so please do check that out at the end of the month. And then it's into the Christmas madness, like I was saying before. We've got a few things planned for December, so our top 10s will be in December this year. Uh, we'll be doing top 10 uh, de of the decade. We're going to be doing torture albums and stuff, so we're going to be doing a clean slate in January starting over. Uh, so lots more to come. Follow us on socials. Keep up to date with all those sorts of things. But we're going to get to the bin, I think, now, unless there's anything else that anyone wants to add there quickly before we move on to that. No, I'm good. No. All right. Bin time. Tim, you first. Uh, really, really uh, famous people uh, bitching uh, for no reason mm. and quite often because they fucked up. Yeah. I just find it very frustrating. Now, the case in point is Aaron Rodgers. Yes. He's a quarterback for the Green Bay Packers who got caught um, uh, not taking his vaccines, which the NFL is very strict on. If you did the vaccine, he got tested positive. Um, yeah. And then sort of blaming the media for going after him when we, in reality it was NFL protocol who had him. Yep. Uh, so... Aaron Rodgers is a little is a little is a little piece of shit. The other person yeah. who comes to mind is Scotty Pippen. <laughs> uh, he's, he's doing something at the moment, isn't he? He fucking hell. Scotty Scotty Pippen is like, oh well, I didn't like the last dance because it made us look like the second fiddle to Michael Jordan. Um, I got news for you, Scotty Pippen. You were you didn't win a title with Portland. <laughs> yep. You know, when 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 Port, Port, 
the greatest NBA, uh, the greatest NBA final series of all time or playoff series was an Eastern Conference series between the Lakers and Portland. And there's a, there's a very famous, there's a very famous uh, uh, point from Game Six when Kobe alley-oops it to Shaq. Mm. But the point is, uh, on the losing side of that was Scottie Pippen's Portland Trailblazers. He didn't win yep. the title of Portland because he didn't have, uh, he didn't know his Batman with him. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, Pippen complaining that he looked like a. They made him look like he complained a lot, and he proceeded to complain a lot. So, yeah, fuck that yeah, dude. Well. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't do himself any favours this week, did he? Also, Travis Scott, fuck that guy. Yeah, fuck that guy too. <laughs> um, having said that, I think there is no greater euphemism for 2021 than Travis Scott doing the robot while people are just dying around him. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, that's it's fucking disgusting. Up, yeah. That's it was disgusting. So, yeah. Terrible dude, terrible human. Um, he's been taken off a bunch of festivals they've done, so uh, that's what you get. Yep. yep. Not hard to work it out. Yeah. All right. Dave, what about you? Yeah, I had one, but we've got a lot of content coming up, so I'm going to stockpile that one because I came up with three during the, con- during the course of this taping. One being nice. running out of beer. As much as I like red wine, I prefer beer. And I prefer whiskey to both. <laughs> So I like alcohol. Anything with alcohol in it is good. So running out of beer, not good. I've been out for a week. I just haven't been able to get to the fucking shops. Number two, <laughs> there's a really creepy fucking noise over there. I This is a folly for filming outside. I think it's a bird, but the bird should be asleep. I could be a possum. Whatever it is, it keeps fucking walking by. I'm not sure what it is. It's paranoying me to shit out. The third <laughs> one is back at about 8.45 to 9 o'clock. You might have heard some noises while we were talking about the hard rock happenings. My fucking yeah. neighbor was on the roof fixing his garage. It was pissing me off because he had his fucking drill. Like, dude, if I can do this shit with the fence during the day, you don't do it at nine o'clock at night. That's just fucking weird. Yeah. Now, I, that makes no sense. <laughs> what are you doing on your roof for a fucking drill? Yo, yeah, Dave, I think it's almost time for you to mow your lawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That could be cool. And to really piss the neighbor off, I'll pump some limp biscuit while I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Fucking yeah. <laughs> Big dirt in the house, boy. Fucking yo. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. I got that for all time. Um, all right. <laughs> You done? You had your event now? You're all good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. All right. I'm going to follow on from Tim a little bit here and go to the basketball theme. I'm going to put Miami Heat and, in particular, Markeith Morris in the fucking bin, you piece of shit. All right? You don't walk up to the MVP, fucking shot, uh, put your elbow into his ribs and your knee into his injured knee and then turn around like nothing's going to happen and then complain when you get checked in the back fucking moron and your entire team in there okay i'm glad Jokic did what he did to you too bad it didn't hurt you more and uh the, all your boys fucking carrying on good luck with that one uh i'm glad Jokic only got one game for that uh, but i think mark heath morris should have been suspended as well because it wouldn't have happened if he didn't do what he did cheap shots in basketball fuck off not required and if you want to be a bully and then you get fucking stomped on by someone bigger than you well then you fucking earned it Dickhead. Someone made a great point. It was like, if you wanted to foul him, you could have just checked his arm. That's it. You know, didn't just, it? Because you, you, you fouled at the end of the game to stop the clocks. Yeah. Stop the clock. So you just check his arm. He had yeah. Every, he, Yoku's head was in every right to, to do what he did. Yeah. That was one of the. Did you see the angle where it shows how much his knee bent? Yeah. Like, that was yeah, Yoku, fucked up. Yoku like, was in every, had every right to, to retaliate. Yeah, I have, and it was funny because being a Denver supporter, they're a small market team, and how much of the media, like Shaq and everyone else, were on Jokic's side for the first time in forever. <laughs> like all the big guys going, "Nah, Jokic was right. You can all fuck off." Like it was refreshing to see that take from basketball media yeah. in the US, <laughs> from my point of view. But yeah, fuck him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens when they play each other in a few weeks' time. We'll put it that way. 
I think it's closer to Christmas they play each other again. It's going to be very interesting. I genuinely hope that it's all just fucking done and dusted. And, but I think Jokic might have sent a message to the league now, just don't be stupid because he's a big boy and he will clean you up. Oh, but, uh, but that's the thing. It sends a message whether he does something or not. Yeah. And if he, if he doesn't do anything, that sends a message to all the other NBA centers. Like, hey, this guy's a pushover. Yeah. So he had to no, do what think- he did. Yeah, I think now he's the uh, the steam train rolling on through, so get the fuck out of the way. I do That's have it. one more to add, but it's not, it's not from me, though. Uh, this is from Mark, who was here tonight. Uh, he was gone. I love my metal vinyl, but what's with all the unofficial releases flooding my online shops? Even the reputable stores are now stocking them. They take good money away from the bands and genuinely suck. Mm-hmm. So that's a bin on behalf of Mark there tonight. He sent it through the inbox earlier today, so that's one for you. Thank you for that one. And we got some comments here as well. Uh, what do we got here? So uh, Joe Rogan can get in the bin from Andrew Marshall. Well, speaking of, you know, uh, yeah. uh, Rogers, that, that works there too. Uh, Nikki's gone. So team Tim tonight. Fuck Travis Scott. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, Sally has said in the bin deadlines, unavoidably being brought forward because Aussie post and delivery companies being signed to the pump right now. Bugger. That is a painful thing this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nikki says, P.S. Davis watched too many horror movies. Birds are coming. So, great movie. I haven't seen that in ages. Yeah, I was going to say, I've not seen that in a long time. Yeah. It's got fucking rules, man. Um, Andrew said, another Wonderful. fun night. So thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, Nikki also mm-hmm. said, love you, Patreon supporters. Keep up the great work. If not already a Patreon, get on it. For only $2 a month enables us to do more. We'll, something, uh, we'll do something special. What's your request? Not not nudity, but a drink and a catch-up for sure. We are playing a lot of things in that space, depending <laughs> oh, on the... More nudity, man. Go for. <laughs> no, you do. Uh, that, how old are we talking about? Of <laughs> course, the hard rock show for nothing. Yeah, well, there we go. <laughs> the hard rock um, yeah, that's not an old gag, that one. Uh, Nikki says, in the bin, fuck tars that shoot the messenger. I don't make the rules here. It's a help. Don't yell at me when you fuck up, boom. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um, that's true as well. That's fucking stupid. Um, but, yeah, I think that's that's about it for tonight. Bit of fun. Been good. Been a longer one, but that's what we are these days anyway. it's um, Thank you both for sticking around and uh, getting through a bit tonight. We don't normally do four reviews, but we wanted to try and catch up for what we missed last week to make it a bit more it was a big week last week. It was. So I wanted to not make don't wanted to not miss a few things there, which is why we're trying to bit of play a bit of catch up this week. We'll get it to more normal things Ooh. next week. <laughs> Andrew's gone. Can I shoot the calendar? Well, yeah, I think we can all shoot the calendar this year. It's 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 an interesting one, if nothing else. <clears throat> but yeah, I think that's it. Is there anything else you guys want to add before we get on out of here and, and wrap this up for the night? No, I think we're good. No, good. We're good. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, it's been another fun night. Thanks for getting involved in the comments. And make sure you do keep that up next time around or, or just keep coming tonight as well. And thank you to you two for taking a few hours uh, here tonight to, to, to spend some time and have some fun. Uh, Mark jumped on saying, wicked, rock out, good. I'm glad you were here to see the bin there as well. Thank you for sending that through to us. All right. But that's it for now for us. We will see you all again very, very soon. Just follow our socials to find out exactly when. But this time, it should be Monday night is next stream for you. But check us out on television as well. Channel 44, Adelaide, Thursday nights, 10 p.m. Australian Central Daylight Time and 10.30 p.m. Saturday night and Channel 31 in Melbourne on Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, you can stream both of those online at the same time at ctv.org. Sorry, ctvplus.org.au. That's the website you're going to go there. Um but I think that's it for now. We'll get out of here. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. We'll see you all again very, very soon. Until then, though, I'm Andrew. Tim. I'm normal, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> As always. Drink up. Rock on. Cut bully sick and bust a cap in your ass, G. Fucking white boy. <laughs> <laughs>